If a joint Comcast Time Warner company is free of potential violations and in the public's best interest. Regulators' primary concern is that the merger would result in a company that wields too much power and makes it extremely difficult for competitors to survive. Comcast, already the nation's largest cable distributor, wanted to buy Time Warner so it could acquire millions of subscribers in the United States' largest markets like New York City and Los Angeles. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports former U.S. military commander and CIA director David Petraeus was sentenced to two years of probation and ordered to pay a $100,000 fine but was spared time in prison on Thursday after he pled guilty to mishandling classified information. The retired four-star general apologized as he admitted in federal court in Charlotte, North Carolina to giving the information to his mistress who was writing his biography. He agreed. You're putting your name, address, credit card number, social security number, all that, you're just chucking it right up onto the internet where any disgusting degenerate can grab it? The only way to make sure that your identity is never stolen is to change it every three years. That's what I do. Two years ago, I was Ellen Foxcroft, attorney at law. Three years before that, I was Trish Homingwood, patient at the Austin State Psychiatric Hospital. And three years before that, I was Regina Dupree, lead singer of the soul group Derriere. And you know what? None of my identities has ever been stolen. So to make sure that your personal information stays safe, you gotta follow some simple steps. First, you're gonna need new pieces of identification, right? But don't worry, old Shelby knows a guy up in Detroit can fix these up pronto, real cheap. Next, you're gonna have to fake your own death. But all that takes is a mold of your teeth, a corpse, and a $500 used car for setting on fire. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome to Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free to join us on the radio waves. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Joining you in studio tonight, it's Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And don't forget, uh, we've got Skype. Skype on into the show here at username lrn.fm. Coming up, apparently reading a book on a school bus is now a problem in at least one school district. Danica, you've got the story. It's right from the top page, uh, the top of our uh, front of our website over at freetalklive.com, as submitted by Anato Renrut, uh, which is, by the way, a, a Reddit-based system that we have over at freetalklive.com where you can actually submit content right there to the front page of the website and vote up or down whether you like or dislike what is already there. So go and see that and get interactive at freetalklive.com. But first, let's go to the phones. To the fun, we've got AC listening in Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Danica, and Daryl. Yeah, I got a fun story to open the show with tonight. Apparently there's a, a dude in Tokyo who's been arrested for uh, sexually harassing women on a train, and it turns out his former harassment was uh, ejaculating on them. Oh, my. Whoa. Whoa. That's definitely harassment. That's uh, that's an assault, I would say. Oh, yes. I agree. Um, you know, there have been some problems that uh, folks have had in Tokyo and I guess other areas of Japan with this train sexual harassment, groping. Yeah, the groping uh, thing. But th this is the first I've... Really? heard of this yeah this is a problem this is like i don't know if epidemic's the right word but it's not an uncommon thing uh in tokyo for women and i presume men as well but uh for people who are on trains to uh be groped without their consent is that right ac yeah that's very that is very common over there now this particular guy because i also share the story on your facebook page if you guys want to see it in more detail um, this guy has been, has ejaculated on more than 100 women with his semen since 2011. How is it that and he what? has been able to get away with it for so long? Well, it says here he, he finally got caught after DNA tests 
found on a woman oh. after found on a teenage girl's skirt, oh. smashed the pit. And and according to this guy, he said the reason I did it was because I got excited in the clo- in the close contact with I was getting excited with close contact with women on a crowded train. Uh, yeah, that's not a reason to do it. Uh, oh, that's... what a sick person! <laughs> well, <laughs> now, no, it's not a reason. Right. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not criticizing you. It's an excuse. Out. It's a terrible excuse. Um, but uh, I, I never said it was a good excuse. Right. What's shocking to me is that these are purportedly very busy trains, which is one of the reasons I've never been to Tokyo, so I can't speak from experience. But uh, purportedly, you know, they're packed in with a lot of people, which is why these guys get away with it, uh, because they're able to grope and sort of slip into another part of the, the crowd, I guess. But at the same time, I mean, if you were uh, self-pleasuring there on the train... That would be kind of obvious. It would at, at least... I feel like it would be obvious. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, I mean, unless you were... St- even if you were standing behind the man who was self-pleasuring, I still think it would be fairly obvious what he was doing. I mean, the, that motion uh, is is fairly distinct. You He's know? just exercising with a shake weight. <laughs> oh, yeah, try getting his shake yeah, weight off the trains, I dare you. That's funny because I was going to mention yeah, that, says, Daryl. Go ahead, AC. Yeah, it says here that he he says he he cut holes in his jacket pocket so he could pleasure himself. That's how he was doing it, apparently discreetly. Yeah, but it's not discreet when uh, your uh, arm you, is moving. Yeah, and presumably um, his uh, in, his unit was sticking out from his right. Pants. If it was going on to someone, right? So. Um, I don't know how you're going to cover that up. I don't know how that's. Uh, I don't know how that could be subtle to anybody who's around. Now, I guess you could argue that people are sort of in their own worlds, right? When they're on a on a subway train, uh, there at least it's this way in the United States. I don't, or you know, big cities. I don't know if it's that way in Tokyo, but I presume it is. Where back in the old day it was newspapers, but now of course it's the cell phones, the smartphones, uh, or somebody with a Walkman in, uh, or both, right? Somebody with a Walkman and a smartphone. So these are people who are very much engrossed in Wait, whatever Wait, are Walkmans is. still a thing? You know, they just came out with a new Walkman. Uh, there's like an actual digital <laughs> MP3-based Walkman now. From is it still as big and bulky as the old and Walkman? And hard to put in your pocket? I could not tell you. I have never seen it, but I've uh, I've seen a picture of it, so I'd, I doubt it is as thick, but it did look fairly large uh, when, I, when I saw it. So you'll have to look that one up. Look up like 2015 or 2014 Sony Walkman. But is the gentleman still using a if he's using a newspaper that provides a much greater cover than say a phone would. no 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 i mean come on how big the newspapers are compared to a smartphone <laughs> yeah but you would still then you'd have to be holding the newspaper with one hand and it would still look pretty weird it would right? look weird but it's a bit bigger cover yeah i don't think so because you're not gonna, the newspaper isn't going to go from your eye level all the way down to your crotch okay maybe an eye if it's a really big newspaper <laughs> or maybe you're just a small person or a magazine so uh, like, a magazine would be a bigger cover. ac you said you posted this to our facebook page is that right yeah i'd like to recommend that you instead of posting to the facebook page post to the uh, free talk live website because you know the way facebook pages are set up you can either set them up to allow everyone to post to the page or only allow administrators to post to the page and so the average listener who posts to the page, I don't think very many other listeners see the, those, those things. Those go off to the side. Yeah, they don't, so I don't think they're seen as, as much. But if you were to post that to the front page of freetalklive.com, then it would be much more obvious for people to be able to participate. And of course, then they could vote on it. Because to me, this is a this is really a great uh, story for and Free Talk I'm, Live. When I'm getting ready to prep for the show, I definitely check the Free Talk Live website right. before I check anything else just to see, oh, what have people been submitting to see if I can talk about it on the show, and that's where some of my stories are coming from tonight. AC, do go ahead and uh, do that in the future. But either way, thanks for calling and bringing it to our attention. That's always the best way to get your uh, story on the air. So thanks for doing that tonight. And uh, great, I think it was a great lead in here for the show. So thanks, sure, AC. Yeah. Uh, we can talk more about that because I, you, Daryl, had not even heard about this phenomenon, if you want to call it that. I think it's something that we should look into. Like, what's Absolutely. the cultural reason for this? Why? Well, is I, this I do know so frequently? that. Uh, uh, and I, I'm trying to, you know, find the words to be radio friendly here. That there was a survey that was done on the people in certain countries that had the most sex and the least sex, mm-hmm. and of the people that are having, what percentage are satisfied with it? And Japan came in 
at the bottom of the list on both of those. Really? For people that are having sexual relations on at least a weekly basis and the people that are satisfied with the sex that they are having. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Adam's in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Adam. Good evening, lady and gentlemen. Hi there. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, I was calling in. Uh, I heard some distressing news today. Uh, I heard Pumpkin Fest is getting shut down. So Good. Because of the, the deadly <laughs> riot. Pumpkin Fest. There's no deadly riot. Uh, there were rumors about someone dying during the Pumpkin Fest riots last year, but those were never confirmed. But uh, that they were actually denied by right, police they chief denied Ken Miola. Let it shine. The organization that runs Pumpkin Fest the permit to run it this year. So what happened uh, was that okay for listeners that don't know, Pumpkin Fest is one of the big things in Keene, New Hampshire, or at least it was, where thousands of people, probably fifty thousand people or something like that. That's would, the claim. Would I've also Keene. heard. People say upwards of like a uh, quarter million. Oh, that's, like people just no make numbers up <laughs> that they claim that Pumpkin Fest brings in eight million dollars to the keen economy over the course they can't of a weekend. Confirm that not last year, but the year before, they did break the world records and had over thirty thousand pumpkins. Right, but pumpkins does not equal people. I agree. I'm just like, saying that's one s- thing one that they can claim could to be bring true. Seven pumpkins. That is one thing that they can claim to be true is that they held the world record for most pumpkins. Yes. They did, and then ultimately Boston did their own pumpkin festival, and uh, then they won the world record at that point, which probably like wasn't it too bounces hard to do. back course, between. You can't compare Boston to Keene. Let's be real here. Right, it's not really fair, you know. To if you were to divide by population, then I think Keene would would still have it, obviously. Um, but so pumpkin fest was this big thing, is somewhat controversial in that some business owners liked it, some of them didn't because like scummy people would come to town and steal things from their stores. But on the other hand, there'd also be more business for the stores. They'd shut down the entirety of Main Street. There's that. Uh, so it was frustrating for a lot of people. And ultimately, uh, there were these riots that went on. And stand by, Adam. We can uh, bring you back here in a moment. 855 450 free. We can talk more about the Japanese train perverts as well coming up it's free talk live hi ron paul here today i have an urgent message for every american who's retired or thinking about retiring soon you see our own government's disastrous policies have now put you me and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Everyone in Paynton is talking about it. Something smells like weed in that back part of the library. Head librarian Cookie Stevens and library volunteers Margaret Mosier and Gail Fredericks were in the middle of discussing the upcoming used book sale Aganza when they smelled something strange. So, Gail, but I just smelled in. marijuana somewhere mm-hmm. and we're yes. like shocked. Yeah. And so Doug goes, do you smell it? Without any way to confirm that the smell was indeed weed, Cookie Stevens called her husband Sheriff Stevens, who called in local ceramics teacher Dutch Gibbs, who lived in Seattle for a few months in the 70s. Yeah, that's weed. 
Sheriff Stevens has begun compiling a list of potential suspects, including that boy Lance who has girl hair and hangs out down by the quarry. Greg Fromke, who was spotted this evening really going to town on some potato skins at Steaky Jake's Steakhouse and Mr. Thompson. Luckily, one young reading enthusiast seemed unperturbed by the illicit smell. Yeah, I, I don't smell anything. I, I really, really, really love the library. The weed smell comes on the heels of last month's discovery of a gigantic pair of women's underpants in the children's fiction section. According to Stevens, that case remains open as well. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Get interactive there and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you. Uh, and if you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support the show, then just shop with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. You can enter uh, Amazon through the links that you'll find there. And so that's Amazon Canada, Amazon UK, and Amazon US. Just pick the Amazon right for you. And Free Talk Live will get a cut of the sale when you enter through shop.freetalklive.com. We're talking about the Pumpkin Festival, and then we can get back to the Japanese train perverts, which apparently are a real problem. And uh, apparently been going on for a long, a long time. long time, yeah. So, uh, but we got Adam back here, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Adam, you were asking about Pumpkin Fest. You said you had heard that it was canceled. Is that right? Yeah, I just saw it on uh, NECN today. Well, they must have gotten it wrong because the news story is actually that Pumpkin Fest is moving to Laconia, which is another city in New Hampshire, a little smaller, a uh, little bit of a smaller city than uh, than Keene. It's on the the in the Lakes region, as it is called. And I've yet to hear the details on you know who's going to be behind the Pumpkin Fest out that way. I presume it's the same group that put it on here in Keene. But ultimately, the Keene City Council denied their permit to shut down Main Street. This year, because of the uh, the riots that happened, which, to be clear, the riots that happened last year in 2014 didn't happen at Pumpkin Fest. Correct. They happened during Pumpkin Fest, but they happened in the college neighborhood, which was about three blocks away from where Pumpkin Fest was actually occurring. Yeah. And the riots that happened in 2012 and 2013 also happened at the college. Of course, they weren't as big in 2012 and 2013. But that's because the police took different approaches then. And one thing that the police chief said during the press conference this past year after the riot, when someone asked, like, you know, what was done differently? He said, well, instead of confining them into the two yards that they were in, we decided to allow them to have the entire city block. And then they tried to come further. So... In 2012 and 2013, when drunken college kids started throwing bottles at one another, the cops said, you don't get to leave this yard. And that was pretty much it, was drunken college kids in two yards throwing bottles at one another, having like many riots on the property there. Mm -hmm. 
in 2014, the cops gave them more room for some unknown reason. I think it's because they wanted to bring the Bearcat out and play with all of their toys. Well, that's not the story I had heard. That's uh, not the story that they're saying. They're never going to say we wanted to play with the Bearcat. No, 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 no. I hadn't heard the story that the cops wanted to give them more room. The that's story- what they said during the press conference that we were both at. Okay, well, I don't, I don't recall that detail, but uh, the story on the ground from the college students was that the cops started breaking up parties earlier in the day, so college students had gotten fairly drunk fairly early on. Right. And so, like, mid-afternoon, the cops came in and started to break up house parties. So these college students were just partying up until that point. There hadn't been any riots until the, uh, the cops came in, broke up a bunch of parties, and then literally— f- forced hundreds of drunken and then at that point angry college students into the streets so they weren't in a yard at that point and uh, you know they the uh, the rioting began after the police had cracked down upon the parties had the police let them alone perhaps there would have been limited destruction only to some private property uh, as opposed to people pulling you know light posts and signs out of the ground and flipping the cars street. upside down yeah, yeah. The fire lit in the street too and- so it became, an, uh, it, you know, became an opportunity for more violence than I think would have otherwise happened because the police used violence against them first. The cops came in with the crackdown mentality, and I think that's that's what backfired. It was the the use of force that created unintended consequences there. That's my understanding of what happened, having seen you know interviews with and talked to uh, some of the people that were that were there, and having been down there myself as well and watching the police in their ridiculous behavior of just making arbitrary invisible lines and then arresting anyone who tried to cross those lines on various different streets, uh, which which was crazy. In fact, one of the kids that got swarmed and attacked by the police hours after Pumpkin Fest was over, hours after the rioting had stopped, uh, there were a couple of uh, three actually young, young men coming from the college campus trying to go to this little store called Campus Convenience, which is literally... On the college campus. I mean, it may not technically be owned by the college, that property. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, but uh, but it's like literally right there on the corner of, of the street. And the cops swarmed these guys, shouting at them, yelling at them to turn around and to get back. And I'm watching all of this happen. I got video of it happening. These young men did not do anything to the police. They did not, uh, in my opinion, break any laws, but yet they were charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. And uh, the young man who was going to take it to trial ultimately took a plea deal on that this week. I did get video footage of that and have yet to put that online over at freekeen.com. So, Adam, um, your thoughts. Go ahead. Uh, I just I just wanted to say uh, one tiny silver lining and one of the, the benefits of the riots was um, about five years ago, I had just gone out of the military. I was visiting some friends in New Hampshire because I'm from New Hampshire. We went to the Pumpkin Fest and— um, when the, the riots happened, I, I saw it on Reddit or somewhere, and so I was looking further into it because I was really interested because I'd actually been there, and I was surprised there was riots. And in trying to look up more information on it, that's actually how I found Free Talk Live. Oh, so right if those riots hadn't gone down, I might not have discovered you guys, and I've been <laughs> listening I've been listening almost every night since, since the riots happened. Well, hey, one good and, thing uh, can come out of that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. If Two it good didn't things. Happen, I, I probably, I probably uh-huh. wouldn't have uh, heard you guys. Cool, man. Well, glad you uh, found the show. And yeah, it is good to look on the the bright side. Thank you for the call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. By the way, the Pumpkin Fest. There's no reason why it couldn't have continued in Keene. It just couldn't continue on Main Street. So I don't know how much effort the organizers put into trying to find alternative venues. Probably none, because yeah. they wanted to shut down Main Street right. and they wanted the city to give them money. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think that they only want to do it with the municipal uh, or the uh, municipality's permission slip, and with you know uh, to be able to work with them so they can have as large a profile as possible. But I think it would have been a fine event had they just rented out the local uh, the fairgrounds, the county fairgrounds. That's what I've been saying for yeah. years. Is you know since I've lived here and I heard about this thing and I heard they shut down all of Main Street. I'm like. Why aren't they at, like, the fairgrounds? And and then it would be totally self-contained. There wouldn't be any businesses in, in the area to be, like, assaulted by a bunch of drunken college kids. I, yeah. 
Yeah, and and, then, then, and business on Main Street would still be busier because sure. there would still be thousands of people in town, and they'd all be, you know, the hotel rooms would be packed, and, you know, everybody would have more business. It just wouldn't be concentrated in the heart of downtown. Absolutely. So yeah. that's what's happening here. And Kinky. you probably would not have the people that live in the area affected by all of the rowdy college kids leaving the city for the weekend because they don't want to deal with the rowdy college kids. And the reason that there's the rowdy college kids, they use Pumpkin Fest as an excuse to invite all of their friends from schools in Massachusetts and Connecticut and come have drunken parties I've in Keene. I've heard Keen. rumors, Daryl, they're going to do it anyway this year. Oh, scandalous. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we'll find out what happens. If you want to see the footage, go and Google or YouTube and search for Pumpkin Fest Riots 2014 or just Pumpkin Fest Riots. Or Riot Fest. <laughs> it's more coming up for free talk. Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade and free professional installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. 
If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Back now with more Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. Perhaps you have spent time in Japan and you've experienced the, I believe they're called chikans, and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that, C-H-I-K-A-N, chikan? Chikan, yeah. Um, they are train gropers is what that means. Trained and gropers? Train, train, is oh. a train that they are riding. Ah, uh, okay. I guess one could train to be a groper. <laughs> Uh, so apparently there's so much of this, and I'd, I'd known that it existed, I knew that it was fairly uh, common, but it's really hard to uh, get a handle on where to start to research this, to talk about this. So I, I did a search for Japanese train perverts okay, and came up with an article from October of 2008. It's been going a from- long time. A website, AsiansMagazine.com. So it's Asian with the letter C-E at the end of the word, Magazine.com. Oh, okay. And it's written by a woman named Angela, and it's titled uh, Pervert Subculture. Oh, I think I've got this one. Yeah, I just I happen to have the same one pulled up. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so let me begin reading the article. She says, I have been warned. I have been repeatedly warned by family, friends, and peers that Japan was full of perverts, which was why I smuggled pepper spray into my suitcase. At first, I was skeptical. What man isn't a pervert? (laughs) No matter where I go in the world, they are bound to be perverts and unconventional behaviors alike. It wasn't until I heard stories of what people experience in Japan and actually experienced it firsthand that Mm. I was that I want to inform others about the pervert subculture. I have been warned. I have been repeatedly warned. And she says this over again. Basically, she reiterates yeah. uh, what she was saying. She says, I know that women get groped on the crowded trains in Japan. I know this. I've, I've heard of it before I came and from others who have actually been groped. Men take advantage of the proximity factor. They grind against their neighboring female counterpart or fondle their butt. Absolutely loathsome behavior. Luckily, some of these issues have been minimized with train cars that carry only female passengers, Uh but not every female boards them. That's Mm. an indicator of how serious a problem this is, right? That this has happened so common, it's so frequent that it happens that they've created women-only train cars. Although the majority of train victims are females, Men are victims as well. I bet they are. Sure, well, yeah. mostly foreign men, like, that is. Likely by other men, I, yes. I suspect. Japanese men are extremely curious about penis size. <laughs> a guy friend I met through training was grabbed on the train while he was sitting down by a Japanese man. Wow. They really want to know how race affects size. You, Some, you would think that this that the uh, the subway is probably not the best place to learn about penis size. No, uh, uh, you know, probably a site like Pornhub. Any website that uh, would have naked pictures of uh, of men on it would be fine, and there are a variety of them. And you know, if you want to make sure that you're not just looking at porn stars, because that might throw off your indicator of you know what a penis actually uh, looks like on average then there are plenty of amateur porn sites as well it just seems that conducting research like that on a uh, open subway car is probably not uh, appropriate but that's just me it's not just subways apparently some japanese men will go to the extent to stare or grab in bathroom washrooms Whoa. or in public Whoa. baths <laughs> She continues, I have another friend that I met through training who encountered train grinding within the first few weeks of settling in. Seeing as how she is Caucasian, it was hard to believe that Japanese men would be bold enough to perform such an act, since most men are either extremely intimidated or, in her case, intrigued by foreigners. When he started to grind his genitals from behind, she turned around and said, no, stop, don't do that. He got embarrassed and went away. Hmm. When the train started to clear, she saw the same old dirty man grinding against a Japanese woman. This time, the victim did not tell him to stop or to go away. 
In fact, nobody else on the train said a word or even acknowledged the situation. Can you imagine that? I mean, that's just even hard to fathom that all the people around watching this, presumably being aware at some level that this is going on nearby them and doing nothing about it. I think she speaks to that here in a moment. I've been to Tokyo and... Really? And yes, and I've never had this experience. I'm I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm sure it does happen. I've thankfully never had that experience. I was groped by somebody on the subway in New York City, which is something uh-huh. I would see I more like I thought I'd be more likely to experience than Japan. What did you do when that happened? Well, I was leaving, so I just kind of stepped off and I was just like, Well, did I just did I just get groped and Was I, it a pinch? It was like a little pinch, yeah. Uh-huh. It was really tiny, but just a, a little bit I, I I just got gross. Like it couldn't have been anything else, right? Like you were walking off a subway with a group of people. Right, and exactly. It and it was then. fairly crowded, not like sardine crowded. It wasn't rush hour or anything, but it was definitely very distinct. Something mm-hmm. that was just like, okay, you know, there's only one thing that that can possibly be. And, you know, turned around, you know, there's all these people. I have no idea who's doing it. And I sure. pulled my friend aside and I just said, I think I just got groped. Let's get out of here. It's right. just, it's really disturbing. Wow. So she continues here. She says, this repulses me. Japanese culture is excessively reserved and taciturn. In fact, people often feel shy and rude if they blow their nose in public. So instead, they hide in bathroom stalls to do this. This is one of the reasons why the train phenomenon is a daily reoccurrence to female victims in this nation. There is nobody to stand up for them. Even the victims seldom stand up for themselves, and people wonder why things haven't changed. If every female victim begins to stand up for themselves, this phenomenon will eventually be extinct and everyone can feel safe to stand close to one another on the train. Everybody knows that this behavior is inappropriate, but since the massive population of trained victims has been letting the situation slide and proceed, the phenomenon will only continue. Hold that thought. I want to continue with the discussion, but I also want to get Matthew in here in Illinois. Matthew, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Danica, and Daryl. Hello there. Hi. I'm at a little station about 40 miles west of Chicago, a small signal, but I'm glad you guys are on the air. Excellent. Um, I was saying about this, uh, There and there's a campus in Illinois, SIU, which is way south in Illinois. Illinois is a long state north to south. And uh, I'm sure a lot of the kids that go there are from the Chicago area, but uh, they've had a big problem at, uh, I presume the pumpkin festival is around Halloween time. Yes. Yeah, it's like one or two weeks before Halloween. That's right. And I see it going back to uh, Halloween being a druidic you know, like Stonehenge, and you know, and I've seen this affect Polish people that don't have anything to do with England or America, other than immigrating here. So it it really is a powerful holiday that has a bad effect, and so you have riots and all kinds of bad behavior. That's very a silly. Th- I think that's a pretty silly thing to say. What do you guys think? I mean, is Halloween the the ho- the power of the holiday? The reason why people went crazy during no, Pumpkin Fest? No, I think people party because party. Yeah, I mean, these are the same. Just so you know, uh, Matthew, that we're talking about Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, there have been similar riots that have happened previously when I believe the Red Sox won the World Series. Yeah. Uh, yes. Now, I don't know. Does that normally happen in October? Maybe you could attribute that to Halloween as well? Uh, well late not, October, not early biggest, November. I'm not the biggest fan of competitive sports. I believe Christians should be pacifists, and so there's a big parallel between competitive <laughs> sports and pacifism and warfare and this kind of thing. So I I don't see a, a very much of a difference as far as the level of satanic activity. And you got to admit, during Halloween, it's the one time – in American culture where openly satanic things pop out, you know, ghouls and all this uh, mayhem, or ghoul, uh, blood and all this kind of thing. Uh, I don't know if blood is necessarily satanic or ghouls. Uh, if I were to see a, you know, a, what's that star Pentagram. Called? Pentagram, thank you. If I were to see that in the fire, when they made the fire in Winchester, then I might agree with you, but I saw no such thing. Hey, uh, I want to talk more about it, though. If you want, hang on, Matthew. We will bring you back here. Is <laughs> is Halloween the power of Satan the reason why the Pumpkin Fest riots happen? That's what he's suggesting here. 855-450-FREE. That's 
3733. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. I have a 70-pound Royal Standard Poodle. Her name is Zelia. And three years ago, Zelia's ears were a mess. She would have sticky, gooey, smelly discharge in her ears. We took Zelia to the vet seven times of $150 every time. The vet offered no success at all. My wife and I are driving, and we hear some people on the radio saying D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Six days after I started feeding her Dinovite, my dog's ear problems were cured. My dog no longer yelps. She can be petted without pain, and it's because Dinovite made our dog healthy again. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Uh, you can get interactive in a variety of ways, but you can also call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE and join us and talk about whatever you want. Also, we've got Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. You know, in today's world, most of us, uh, most people, most adults have a smartphone. 
And so that probably means most people listening to the sound of my voice right now have experienced the hassle of having your phone die before the day's even half over. Uh, you can solve that problem by getting yourself the Pocket Power Plus. And, of course, it'll also, uh, I, say, I say of course, it's actually shouldn't say that because most of these batteries, these uh, portable batteries, will not charge your laptop. The Pocket Power Plus will. And the Pocket Power Plus is so powerful that in some circumstances, it can actually jumpstart a car. In fact, they'll supply to you most of the adapters you could possibly need, including jumper cables, in their accessory pack. It's a breakthrough in portable power technology. It's the Pocket Power Plus. Wherever you are, this thing can keep your devices powered, and uh, you can get one for half off by going to PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. And you can use coupon code FTL to save even more. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. Com. As we go back to Matthew in Illinois, uh, Matthew, you're back on Free Talk Live. Now, what you were suggesting, we were talking about this pumpkin festival here in Keene that made international headlines in 2014 oh, because yeah. of the, not because of the festival itself, but because of what happened about three blocks away with huge riots uh, happening with the college students here and the police crackdown that came as a result of that, or actually could be argued that it was a police crackdown on the parties that resulted in the riots because they weren't happening until the police started breaking up parties. So, Matthew, is it your opinion? You seem like a very uh, like ultra-religious kind of guy here. You're blaming Halloween for this, even though Halloween happens a week after uh, the Pumpkin Festival. You're blaming Satan uh, for this. And I guess I'm wondering, do you feel like Satan is also behind the police? Well, uh, there's an old saying in the scriptures that I believe in practice that the devil literally is the prince of the world. He's the really ruling power. So I don't vote. I've, starting in 1988, I started going to a church that doesn't vote just because it's useless to try to change anything outside of the church. Okay. So let me see if I've got... Uh, this straight. You think that the police are on the side of Satan or not? That was my question. Well, I mean, it's obviously there's like real rapists and murderers out of there, out that that the God has allowed the police to control. But basically, the the overlying system is under the control of Satan. When I say, you know, and kind of like this Halloween incident and the riots in the college town. So who is, okay, so does Satan, are you saying Satan is sort of like on all sides, meaning that he is, uh, or Satan is creating the parties and Satan's organizing the police to, to bust them up? <clears throat> Just curious. I mean, is he it's, picking it's sides or really, is he on all sides? It's really multifactorial. You have this intermingling between the Christian culture and the old Satan. And, so uh, 500 years before Christmas, or before the advent of Christ, uh, Romans were exchanging gifts at the time we have uh, Christmas. And so they put the Nativity of the Lord to combat the pagan holiday. They put All Saints Day, November 1st, to combat this Halloween mess that you've got uh, in, in your town. But the the church, this was centuries ago. They forget why they do it, and you know, so there's a large back and forth. I don't think that answered my question. And Am I missing something here, Daryl? No, uh, he he's not really answering the question. Uh, although How I, do I, I know you're not an agent of Satan, uh, Matthew. Hold on, trying to fool let, us. Let, let, let me let uh -huh. me make a point real quick before Matthew okay. answers yeah. your absurd question. He won't answer it. I, I know he won't, but he'll <laughs> he'll say something and you know in a sort of a rebut. Uh, but the thing about you know All Saints Day and Halloween and Easter and the Feast of Ishtar and Christmas and the Yule and Solstice and Saturnalia mm -hmm. back in I think it was the third century A.D. Constantine decreed that everyone in his empire must be a Christian. So the church Christianized all of the pagan holidays mm. to try to get the pagans to come to church to obey the law. They were co-opting them. Right. Yeah. They, that, that's what I said. They yeah. Christianized it. They right. said, oh, you do this. Well, we do this slightly different, but right. it's at the same time, so right. it's close enough. We never did it before, but now we're doing it like you do it. 
Yeah, you know, yeah. eggs and bunnies, and you know, have you ever Christmas wondered trees. what <laughs> eggs and bunnies had to do with you know the savior of the world dying and then New life? raising? Yes, they took well, the, the people... spring festivals of fertility mm-hmm. and they Christianized the them yeah. and turned it into Easter. Well, the 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 Halloween is my understanding is the Druidic, you know, the Stonehenge type people. Uh, that's their New Year's. Uh, like the young lady mentioned, a pentagram. I guess the guys that really use the pentagram, I think that's their highest holiday. I'd heard uh, many years ago that more children die on Halloween night than any other night. That uh, sounds you know. like a ridiculous claim. I mean, you know, there's a lot of uh, rumors that fly around, and uh, many of them are unsubstantiated, like the classic claim that there's razor blades and apples. It's never no, no, been no. substantiated. It, like I said, I think it's a hidden force, like in your college town. Like uh, Mrs. Jones has got yeah. uh, double bags of M&Ms, and they run across the street and get hit by a car. See what I don't know what but, you're but talking the, about, the really. Statistic. Here's no, another question you, I have statistic. for you. Since you're talking about Satan is uh, behind the Pumpkin Festival riots— um, I'm just curious. It was Jesus who turned water into wine, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, alcohol is a pretty dangerous drug. I mean, there's evidence to suggest that alcohol and heroin are probably the two hardest, most dangerous drugs known to mankind today. And, uh, I mean, there's some really crazy stuff that happens when you give enough people enough alcohol and put them together, and that's ultimately what happened with uh, the Pumpkin Fest riots. It was drunken college students. Is there a certain point at which, when you're drinking alcohol, you cross from the threshold of being in, in God's favor into Satan's hands? Glass of wine a day. <laughs> so more than one glass, and you become a Satanist, uh, or a, 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 a you, you're a tool of Satan at that point, but up to one— as you, as you said, Jesus turned water into wine. It also talks about how Jesus drank wine, mm. which, you know, there's a lot of uh, strict groups that don't allow alcohol. Well, those I'm not, are I'm no not fun. in that camp. Yeah. But um, obviously it speaks either. against many, many times uh, the scriptures in the church uh, speaks against drunkenness. Mm-hmm. So, like I say, glass now, of wine a day. You should drink a glass How big should the glass be? Because I've seen— Eight ounces of— Eight well, ounces or 80 alcohol. ounces. Let's be specific What here. does Jesus say about this? Does the Scripture uh, make a note on that? I doubt it, right? It, it says that he drinks wine, yeah. and, and elsewhere— What's the percentage of the fact, wine? In fact, in the very Scripture where it says that he drinks— He says that he drinks wine. He says it. Is it 9%? He talks about drunken— 14%? He talks about drunkenness in the same yeah. passage. But that's why you drink wine, right? Because you want to feel the effects. I mean, isn't that the purpose to drink wine? No. Well, the the, there, there are certain wines, uh, like red wine, specifically has health benefits to where it does something with the kidney and helps flush out yeah. toxins. So, I like to tell myself that, too, but, when I'm drinking I mean, the uh, red wine. I think, uh, <laughs> I think the god of uh, drinking is called Bacchanalia, and, uh-huh. and that was part of the Christmas holiday that— the church tried to combat with the nati- place of nativity at that date. Matthew, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I mean, I'm just asking all these questions because it's just ridiculous. I mean, the, the idea that uh, Satan is behind the, uh, the, the Pumpkin Fest riots. Look— Alcohol was behind the Pumpkin Fest riots, and the police were behind the Pumpkin Fest riots. And kids riots. just wanting to have a party were yeah, behind no, the riots. No, of course, the ultra-religious person uh, from the Christian side of things would say that, well, yeah, this is the uh, the decline of society, right? That there these riotous parties are happening, uh, these ragers, as the, the young people might call oh, them today. Well, they also say Black Friday is the decline of society. I remember hearing that call back on the... Uh, Black Friday edition of Free Talk Live, and I just kind of had to roll my eyes at that too. <laughs> so I guess you know my question for you, uh, listeners, is you know, do you buy it? Is are you on board with that particular theory? The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. If you want to share your thoughts with us here tonight. Now, one thing that is interesting about Halloween is it seems to be the one day of the year where it's acceptable to do weird, strange pranks to people that you may or may not know. Uh, you know, egging houses and That's not throwing. Acceptable. Societally, legally, it's not, but societally, it is accepted that high school and college kids are going to go like egg houses and toilet paper yards. 
I don't think people accept that. They're victimized by it. Yes. They're not. They're like, oh, it's Halloween. It's all right. You can to- toilet paper and egg my house now. Heck no. Uh, that would be accepting it. 855 450 free. We can continue here in moments. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.80 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,188 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $233. Antiwar.com reports, between the Iraq and Afghanistan occupations, the United States has had an awful lot of occasions to kill innocent civilians and has adopted the regional practice of paying blood money to the families of the slain in compensation for the deaths. The amount can vary from a few hundred to thousands of dollars depending on how keen the U.S. is to placate a given victim's family. In the wake of yesterday's admission that they killed a pair of Western hostages in Pakistan, the White House seems to be trying to adapt this practice to Western victims as well, saying they intend to make payments of compensation to the families of American Warren Weinstein and Italian Giovanni Lo Porto. While wrongful death compensation is not an entirely foreign concept in the West, the White House's combination of these payments with an insistence that the killings were in accordance with international law likely will not sit well with many. The families of the slain aid workers were already criticizing the administration for its inconsistent response to the initial hostage taking and are likely to see the pledge of money as trying to buy their silence on the matter, particularly with the administration so clear that the killings are not going to spark any real policy change. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Coinbase has more than 1 million consumer wallets and is trusted by over 25,000 merchants, including Overstock.com, Khan Academy, Reddit, and of course, FPP. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. 
UPI reports Comcast may abandon its plan to purchase Time Warner Cable for $45 million. An unnamed source told the New York Times of the cable company's intent to drop their bid after intense regulatory scrutiny by the U.S. Department of Justice. Comcast, Time Warner, and the Federal Communications Commission offer no comment on the news, but a DOJ spokesperson told CNBC that the department will continue its review of the deal. The DOJ said it was not aware of anything related to a plan to drop the deal. The news comes one day after representatives from Comcast met with federal regulators from the DOJ. Justice officials who are responsible for ensuring any merger does not violate antitrust laws met with the cable representatives as the agency nears its final recommendation as to whether the merger should be allowed or not. The DOJ and FCC are each reviewing the proposal for effectively the same reason to see if a joint Comcast Time Warner company is free of potential violations and in the public's best interest. Regulators' primary concern is that the merger would result in a company that wields too much power and makes it extremely difficult for competitors to survive. Comcast, already the nation's largest cable distributor, wanted to buy Time Warner so it could acquire millions of subscribers in the United States' largest markets like New York City and Los Angeles. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports former U.S. military commander and CIA director David Petraeus was sentenced to two years of probation and ordered to pay a $100,000 fine but was spared time in prison on Thursday after he pled guilty to mishandling classified information. The retired four-star general apologized as he admitted in federal court in Charlotte, North Carolina to giving the information to his mistress who was writing his biography. He agreed under a plea deal to a misdemeanor charge of unauthorized removal and retention of classified material. U.S. Magistrate Judge David Kiesler raised the fine from $40,000 that had been recommended to the maximum possible financial penalty for the charge, noting it needed to be higher to be punitive and reflect the gravity of the offense. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A hot new murder craze sweeps Chicago. Things that shouldn't be said in modern society are said 1,400 times at the RNC, and a brave woman enters a restaurant without first looking it up online. This is the Onion Week in Review. The World Wildlife Fund quickly backtracked Thursday from a recently released press statement saying panda ears are, quote, absolutely delicious. Organization officials noted that while panda ears do taste amazing, braised, steamed, fried, or cooked in an omelet, they should not have announced it publicly, nor should they have ever eaten any part of a cheetah, giraffe, or bang tiger, no matter how good they may be. According to company sources, the Netflix board of directors held a tense series of meetings earlier this morning to decide whether the fantasy comedy Michael is streamworthy. The board reportedly sat through its mandatory two back-to-back -back screenings of the 1996 film starring John Travolta as an angel visiting Earth, all while passionately arguing over the film's story, acting, and level of enjoyment upon subsequent viewings to determine if the movie should be available through its instant viewing program. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live. You can join us here toll free, 855 450 free. If you're just tuning into the show earlier in the program, we actually weren't intending to talk about this, but I think it's <laughs> it's fascinating. Uh, the chickens. Chicken. Uh, chickens. Chicken? It chicken. does have that sound, but no. Well, I mean, I mean, you could call them chickens in some way, but they I guess they are kind of They're cowards. actually kind of bold. Um, mm. Actually, you could argue that the people who are their victims are more the cowards, at least from what True. Uh, we're talking about the, the train gropers, uh, the train perverts, Japanese train perverts. Yeah. And there it's a problem over there so much to the fact that they have actually created women only train cars, which has helped quite a bit. But I guess not everybody. It's a voluntary segregation thing. Uh, so some women still get on the, the main cars. Maybe they don't know about the female cars or they just don't care. Maybe they like it. I, I don't know. But uh, apparently there, it's fairly common that this happens. People are being molested on trains. Um, men and women are being molested. 
And we're in the middle of a story, but and I want to continue with that here in a moment. By the way, with you tonight, it's Ian. Danica. And Daryl. First, let's go to the phones and the fun. We've got Zach on the line, in, on Skype, actually. Zach, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I, I, I don't mean to derail the topic. I hope you don't mind. To derail um, it. I, yeah, <laughs> the, the last guy, guy kind of took us off the tracks. Um, you guys, do you guys think all of us who have religious beliefs are that crazy? No, I have religious <laughs> beliefs. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I, I was just sitting in, in my recliner just kind of casually listening to the show, and come on, man. Like, <laughs> there, there, there's no link between Stonehenge and the Druids. I, I almost spit up my beer when I heard that. Oh, yeah, I meant to call I him mean, out on that one, too. I mean, you're, call, you're, re, you're referring to our last caller who was suggesting that it is the hand of Satan who is creating these riots, the uh, pumpkin riots at uh, Pumpkin Festival and elsewhere, and it was just kind of a ridiculous. And there's pentagrams call. in the fire on the road. Ooh, <laughs> my my favorite sports team won a championship. Let's go burn stuff. Yeah. Right. So no, I mean I don't think that everybody who has religious beliefs is is irrational in the same way. I mean everybody. Yeah, has... It was more of a rhetorical question. It, it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but why I did want to call in, I've wanted to call in for a couple nights about this, um, but I wanted to save it for a night where we might have more people on the airwaves. Uh, I'd, I'd like to stir the pot a bit because it's Friday night and all. Um, the other night, there was a conversation about um, uh, the transgender folks among us and, and the bathrooms and this whole conundrum. Yeah, that filled uh, and, up a whole and, show. Right. If you recall, it, it, it pretty much hijacked the entire show. And um, where... This kind of breaks down for because I I think about it and eventually I come to I think the same place as Mark and I I believe you Ian don't let me put words in your mouth but basically it's up to the property owner and I kind of come come to a position of really if you're not bothering anybody what do I care you know we're all just doing our own business and right. kind of moving right. on with our lives. Uh, I'll there, tell you so- the 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 bathrooms that I enjoy using the most are the single stall bathrooms. To where, you know, it doesn't matter who was in there before me. Nobody else is walking in while I'm doing my business. And, you know, even if it's one of these multi-stall sorts of things, as long as there's walls between the stall, Mm -hmm. what difference does it make? I agree. Or what about bathrooms that have both a man and a woman on the side so that both sexes can use it? Well, right. That's, I think, what uh, Zach is suggesting here, that private property owners should be able to make choices like that. And they can make those choices. There's not a law that uh, that forces people, that I know of at least, maybe there is somewhere, but I've never heard of it, that forces people to go into separate bathrooms. It's just common. It's the sort of societally common, uh, accepted standard, and, and that's what business owners want to do. They want to be popular, so they do what's you know societally approved. Yeah, and uh, if if I may, because it sounds like we're all here on the same page, kind of you know singing along as a choir. But uh, for the folks, uh, there's a there's one camp, and and we all know who they are. That says, "What's between your legs? That's where you go." You know, those <laughs> folks who, who are just resistant to change. Um, to those folks, and and even you guys in the studio, if if you like, if you want to be in for a treat, head over to Google and uh, search Buck as in, you know, a greenback, a buck, and then second word, angel. And I don't know if you've ever heard of oh, uh, this. Oh, yes, I, I, I'm aware yep. of this. I know who this you're talking about. Familiar. Is this a transvest- or transgendered person? Yes, I've shown you pictures yeah. of him. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why it probably sounds familiar. Um, I, I'm not sure not sure which, but um, th- those folks who can hear my voice right now, and, and you're the of the mindset of, what's between your legs, that's where you go. You, whoever you are, listen to me, go to Google, put this in, and look at the images that come up, and picture this individual fully clothed, and which which bathroom this person will cause the least amount of chaos in, right. according to that theory. And that's that where it completely amazing. breaks down. <laughs> I yeah, had not seen can... uh, Buck, the nude picture of Buck previously, but I guess well, you well, have. Welcome, really? Welcome to the club, Ian. Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> I, I, I also remember showed you pictures of <laughs> Bailey J. I remember seeing Buck. Like when I searched for Buck, I remember like like he basically what you're talking about here for people who do not have Google in front of them is what looks like a badass biker dude, and <laughs> he's got a vagina. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for for those who who aren't near a computer right now who are just dying to know, uh, this individual was born a woman, and uh, for for reasons only he could tell you, uh, decided to become a man. 
and I believe uh, my my casual understanding of the case is um, he used a lot of male growth hormone and huh. some other uh, um, you know methods, and his entire upper half is a man and, and a well built one. Oh that. yeah. And uh, the the lower half is completely unchanged. I'll leave that to your imagination. <laughs> and uh, it, it's an it's an interesting you know example of where for this particular conversation, that person where should they go? And, and yeah, absolutely. I say, I, you know, they I should say, go course. into the unisex bathroom that has one stall, and then nobody freaks out. I think uh, he should go wherever or she. I don't know how. How does Buck refer to his him or herself? Buck. I, I believe, yes, I believe he prefers the the him pronoun. The I, yeah. I think uh, you know he's he, a porn star. He should I know go that wherever he darn well feels like going. Right. Yeah. And so, if you uh, try to stop him, he's big enough to yeah. kick your butt. <laughs> that's yeah. a, that's a great point, Zach. Anything else you want to share tonight? No, no, I, I look forward to any follow-up calls. This should be fun. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. I didn't realize he was a porn star, but it figures that uh, that yes. he is. Um, wow, that's uh, that's fascinating. <laughs> yes. All right, so you can share your thoughts here on that or whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. So we've been talking about sort of sex-related stuff here tonight, uh, although in the case of the train perverts, it is not consensual. Um, and Daryl, you had just started, or maybe gotten through a good chunk of uh, a story over at AsiansMagazine.com, written back in 2008. But this is still a problem. It's been a problem for a long time in Japan, where there are these chikans, chikan, a chikan, chikan, where chikan. Chikans are on these train cars, and they are groping, and they are poking, and prodding, and um, and apparently other things. People <laughs> people stand by. Even the victims will just stand there and take it, and that has something to do with Japanese culture, apparently. Yes. Uh, so this article is written by, I believe, she is an American who is living in Japan or lived in Japan, mm -hmm. and she teaches English to children. And she explains that a little bit further down. Uh, she writes, My closest pervert train experience happened when I was walking towards the train station after lessons. It was about 8 o'clock in the evening, and the road was nearly empty. There was no sidewalk, just one road with, li with lines painted on it for pedestrian walkers. I was walking uphill as, as I saw a man in his 20s or 30s in a loose t-shirt, cargo pants, and glasses. He looked like the typical anime worshiper, and he just came out of an izakaya, which is a Japanese drinking establishment. We, we were walking towards one another when I saw his arm reach out and attempt to grab my butt. My reflex was amazingly sharp that night. And I was able to block him. Oh, he wow. failed. I was in shock and petrified. All I could do is shout a muffled, hey, but he just kept on walking towards his destination, wherever that was. And there is more. Oh, yes. We'll come back with it here. And you can share your thoughts. Maybe you've been to Japan. Maybe you live there right now. And you have some comments on the train perverts. 855-450-FREE. Or maybe you are a trained pervert. 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $20, $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey, you're welcome. <laughs> 
On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. You can also join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. That's uh, again, Skype user LRN.FM. Joining you in studio, it's Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And if you want to get Bitcoin or Litecoin, Dogecoin perhaps, go to ExpressCoin.com. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They are a licensed money services business, and you can get cryptocurrency with money order or check via ExpressCoin. They've got great rates. The fee, I think you'll find, is the lowest uh, in the industry that I've seen. And you can use coupon code FTL and pay no fee whatsoever on up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency of choice. I don't know how many million Dogecoin you can get for 40 bucks, but it's probably a bunch. quite a bit. Um, you can't get that much Bitcoin for $40. But still, it's a good way to get started on your Bitcoin collecting, uh, if you will. ExpressCoin.com. Go there, use coupon code FTL, and you'll get, again, up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee. If you need to get more than 40 they can handle that. They can handle... A lot. If you need a lot of Bitcoin, they can handle that too. They're uh, they're great over at ExpressCoin, and it's so easy. ExpressCoin.com. As we continue here, Daryl, you're sharing with us a story about uh, being in Japan and a lady who is not Japanese by her uh, uh, by I guess she's origin. not natively Japan. Yeah, by origin. So she's observing this as an outsider who's living there and seeing people who are being molested on train rides, on subways, and elsewhere. In her case, she was just walking down the street, and some guy reached out to grab at her 
her butt. I mean, this, yes. this guy wasn't even trying to be subtle at all. Um, and I guess it's just so common that the victims are so easily victimized, meaning they'll do nothing. They'll just stand there on the subway train while they're being molested, and the people around them will do nothing and say nothing In Japanese about culture, uh, the natives value quietness and calmness, so speaking up is considered rude mm. and out of the ordinary. So when they're assaulted, I imagine the, to take it. the victim just kind of sits there as just you know, just to take it and not say anything because she would rather just feel violated than be rude. Than cross social boundaries. Right. Wow. And you kind of, you're a fan of Japanese culture, right? Absolutely. You've, uh, you're big into anime and other things? And, and manga, gaming. I mean, I've been to Japan a couple times. I'm oh, going cool. there again this year. Uh, and Tokyo? Tokyo, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, Asagaya, where my brother is. And I, lo- you know, I have, um, I've traveled the trains many times at night and in the daytime, never once feel violated. You know, I, I did mention to you last time that I was in New York City when I had gotten a, a tiny little bit of a pinch in New York, Philly, those bigger areas where there's a more, uh, more varied culture there. That's where I would expect to have that kind of intrusion, not really Japan. So, I mean, it doesn't surprise me because Pete... People are going to be perverts. They're going to be perverts anywhere. Well, maybe the it's perverts just, in Japan know that the Japanese women are easily vic- uh, more easily victimized because the, of the culture, whereas, you know, you're a uh, round eye, and so they're not going to mess with you. <laughs> well, if that's the case, you're then. You're more likely wh- to speak up. But why would... Well, yeah, yeah, I guess you make a good point. I was thinking, well, why would they not want to go after the white woman because she's Because you're not an exotic. easy mark. You know, any, yeah, anybody who's a, you know criminals, right, like they're going to they're gonna case a joint. You know, they want to see if there's security around before they rob a house or something like that. They want to know when the people who live in the home are there and when they're gone. Uh, you know, a criminal's going to be general. I mean, there's some stupid criminals, no sure. doubt. But uh, the criminals, many of them, are intelligent enough to pick their victims. They're not going to go and beat up, try to beat up a really tough guy, you know, like uh, Buck Angel, for instance. Uh, you know, that guy can walk down an alleyway and he'll probably be all right. But somebody who's uh, not so built, they might be more easily victimized. The criminal's more likely to target them. So if Japanese men who are doing this victimization, if they know that white women are more likely to, or any, you know, black women or anybody else who's who's visiting, who's not a Japanese woman, uh, they know they're more likely to speak up, to turn around, to slap them, to push them <laughs> yeah. away, to yell, to scream, uh, That as opposed to what apparently is fairly common among Japanese women where they will just quietly stand there and take it. Um, then they're going to go with the safe route. Yeah, right? that's, a, that's a very good point. So she continues here with her article saying that after the experience walking to the train, she now walks to and from the train with pepper spray in her hand mm. and rarely turns around, or rather she turns around every few minutes. So, so she's always looking around her, wow. like being aware of her situation. She says, my other pervert experience happened while I was at work. As an English teacher, I teach students ages 2 to 15, and being able to teach young children, I am able to more fully comprehend why males have grown up in a culture where female objectification is acceptable. I sit down on the carpet and begin my lesson after taking the attendance. Little Keshin pops forward and touches my breast. Dame! I yell in Japanese, which means bad. Did I pronounce that right? Dame. Yeah. He looked scared at first, and then it turned into a triumphant grin. There was no point in lecturing a three-year-old when they cannot understand English, so I just let it slide. After a while... I turn around and he pats my behind with both hands, oh giggling. Oh my gosh. Dame. Later in the week, I talked to a Japanese staff about his behavior. Apparently, she also experienced the same breast grab. Wow. And she tried to talk to his mother about the inappropriate conduct. According to and the he's mother. Three, three years old. Three. He, does with, he does this with the mother and other females. And, quote, nobody has said a word or scolded wow. him. Mm-hmm. This is why he doesn't think it's wrong. And this is how the pervert subculture is bred. Yeah, it sounds like it. She says, I can go on listing all the deviant activities I have witnessed and heard about from the normal grab and grope to drawing nipples at the bottom of my W's. But the most inappropriate <laughs> act so far it took is me a the moment beard to figure that out. poncho. <laughs> The, the nipples at the bottom of my W's. It took me a moment to figure that out. She's talking about, like, writing the letter W on a chalkboard yes. or something, and then a kid going up and 
Joanne yes. Nipples. Gotcha. Uh, concho. She says, personally, I have never experienced being conchoed. I wake up being grateful every day. My students are not that bad. Out of the 200 students, only three stand out as perverts. My coworkers, both female and male, have experienced much more terrible deeds. If you clasp your hands together and stick out your two index fingers, you are ready to concho someone. <laughs> your two index fingers are the weapon, and you insert them into someone's anal area when they are vulnerable and not looking. Mm. Horrendous, right? Above all, it is mostly little children doing this to their friends, family, adults, and even their teachers. <laughs> My coworker was <laughs> conchoed by a little girl. Oh, wow. Okay. That's she unusual. was the cutest girl in the class and the obvious candidate for a conchoer. Why? They usually are the young, sweet students, and this uh. is why it is the easiest to let your guard <laughs> down around them. But once you do, you easily become a concho target. Still, this gives English teachers in Japan a reason to never, and I repeat, never turn your back on your students. Surely wow. not all Japanese are perverts, but a whole lot of them are. And you know what? Still, she finishes, Japan is a beautiful place to live and visit. Just be cautious like you would be anywhere else in the world and learn key Japanese phrases like sexual harassment in case it ever comes in handy. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. It just brought to mind some anime that the pervert culture is real. There is this anime called Love Hina where this guy manages a bathhouse full of women. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tell me. Well, I want to know more about this here in a moment. Hang on. Sure. Love, <laughs> Love Hina? Love Hina. All right, I want to know what that is here in a moment. 855-450 free. More coming up on Free Talk Live. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're talking about the very strange behavior of, well, it's strange to us, but apparently not so much in Japan, of being a chikan. Uh, ch chikan? Chikan, yeah. Chikan. Uh, over in Japan, this is somebody who is a train groper, a train pervert, poker, I a, guess. A pervert on a train, not someone who went through training to become a pervert. Yeah, I, I didn't say trained, but uh, yeah, someone who uh, who spends their, you know, they're driving to work or they're riding to work or going wherever it is they're going. Or maybe they're just on the train just for the purpose of groping. I'm sure all of those things happen. Um, but we've been delving deep into this subject here, as, as deep as we can from our outside perspective. But mm. at least, Danica, you actually have gone to Japan. Yes. Um, however, you thankfully have not experienced this. And the suggestion is from the article that you were reading, Daryl, that maybe uh, people who are not J Japanese, so American women, for instance, or other women from other cultures. But it did mention that foreign men are often groped. Oh, was it foreign men are often groped? I just yes. thought it was that just that men are often groped. I no, it specifically said foreign men are often groped because the Japanese are interested in the uh, endowment that they oh, might that's have. Right. That's right. Yeah, they that's were right. looking at the sizes. And yeah, groped it. from the front, I guess we should clarify. I imagine <laughs> many of the gropings go from the back because, you know, they're still trying to hide it to some extent. I mean, in a lot of these circumstances, right, and the victim is cars. not paying attention to them. They're not in their vision. Yeah. But all that said, even when it is obvious, some of the victims, the female victims, the Japanese women, will just stand there and take it. And uh, anyway, we can go back into and this And not here. only do the victims stand there, but people on the train that witness this that's don't most, say anything. The shock, that's the most shocking part about this uh, to me. What, I want to continue the discussion here, but also want to let you know that you not only do you have to protect yourself on a train, but you need <laughs> to protect yourself on the Internet as well. There are people out there, including your very own Internet service provider, who would like to know what you're doing online. Your ISP is probably saving every website that you visit, uh, and uh, they might be saving those files for years. And, of course, they'll turn them over to advertising, advertising agencies or governments. And you can stop that from happening by using ProXPN. You go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 and you'll save 50% off the price of their annual account. ProXPN is a virtual private network and they're global. They've got server locations around the world. Now, with their free account, you only get to use, I believe it's either the New York or the Dallas server, only one US-based server. But once you get their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, you get servers around the world. I think they actually have one in Tokyo and the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So you can go and get yourself uh, your free account over at ProXPN.com slash FTL, and then use promo code FTL50 when you're ready to upgrade, and you get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You really have nothing to lose here. You can get it for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, whatever you're using to connect to the Internet. ProXPN can protect you, but you've got to take the steps to make it happen 
First step is to go to proxpn.com slash FTL, grab the software, get it up and running, and then you can upgrade with code FTL50 to save 50% off the price of the annual account. Now, now Danica, I definitely want to hear more about the Love anime Nina. stuff, but it's not just Japan where this sort of stuff goes on. Oh, definitely not. And it... people standing around don't do anything. Really? Let's talk about there uh, was... India. For example. No, let's talk about Panama City, Florida. Oh, in Florida. Okay. Last week or two weeks ago spring during break. spring break, there was a gang rape on the beach. Oh, my. What? Hundreds of people were standing around partying while this was happening. There's video of it. Oh, my. The police say this is not the first video we've recovered. It's not the second video. It's not even the third video. There are a number of videos recorded with things similar to this. Uh, they also say that there were hundreds of people standing there watching, looking, seeing, and hearing, and nobody did anything to stop it. Oh, that is so heartbreaking. Is so really heartbreaking. it's not just Japan, and maybe it's, you know, College now, kids these days drunk out of their mind, and well, they weren't paying attention to what was going on. So, okay, I, I don't know much about this, right? I just did a quick Google. You just brought it up. Didn't know you were going to, but I just pulled up a CNN story about this saying that she uh, may have been drugged. The, the victim in this case may have been drugged, in which case it's possible. Now, again, I haven't seen the video. I don't, Nor I don't have I, and I don't want to see the video. I, right. But I'm just going to speculate here that if she was drugged enough— then it could be that she wasn't protesting. That doesn't mean it's not rape, right? They're, they were definitely raping her. Right. Um, but if she's out of it to the point where she looks like a willing participant in a you know mass sex act, essentially. People are uh, going to assume that she's consenting to it, possibly. Right. I mean, if she's not there screaming, get them off of me, then, I, I mean, I can't imagine. It would be... It, the, what would shock me the most would be that if she were actually screaming, no, stop, you know, get off of me, stop them, or, you know, yelling sure. for help, that a bunch of guys around on a beach wouldn't step in to try to save her in some way. Uh, would, that would be the most shocking to me. If she was near unconsciousness and not protesting as a result of that or just so drugged out of her mind or drunk out of her mind that she didn't even know what was happening to her – let alone anybody else was aware that it was not consensual, then it wouldn't surprise me if people just grabbed their video cameras and, and observed. So I'm not justifying what happened. I'm just explaining why people would have behaved in one way right. versus I, another. I'm just saying if she was completely you know, like unconscious while this was happening, in my opinion, it makes it more despicable that nobody stopped it. Yeah, I don't know if I I don't know if she was unconscious or not. It's not made clear here in in the story if she was if she was conscious. Right, that, but that's not... something that I have not been able to figure out either what her state of consciousness was. But the fact that you know there's hundreds of people that are standing around watching, and nobody does anything. I it says here that. she does not remember the assault at all, wow. according to uh, Corley, which is I believe one of the sheriffs. Not really sure. Ruth Corley, the spokeswoman for the sheriff's office. They have arrested some of the alleged uh, rapists in this case. At least two or three of them, uh, according to the story here, they've been charged with the. Uh, Let's see where they they're posting bail of fifty thousand dollars, etc. Yeah, it's uh, that's a horrible story. Thanks, yeah. Daryl. <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> so, what were you going to tell us about uh, Danica? That what is this anime? Love Hina, and Love what was the context? Hina. So, when you brought up the whole pervert story about how it seemed and normal, Concho. right? It seems normal to the child that it's okay to do this to women. And it got me thinking, you know what? There is a lot of anime that kind of pokes fun at perverts and just tries to pass off as, oh, they're just being klutzy. They're you know really sweet, but they're just not very good with women. And a good example of this that I can think of is an anime called Love Hina. It's about this boy that goes to live in his grandmother's hotel and the hotel has been converted to an all-women's apartment complex. And hmm. so from there, he's getting himself into all sorts of shenanigans. Like oh, he, I bet. He'll, you know, you'll see his face smooshed into a girl's chest. You know, he accidentally stumbles into a, a shared 
bath where all the women are taking a bath together. I mean, it's just it's comical but embarrassing. And I think it's it's part of the culture to say, hey, this is okay. The guy is super sweet. He's just being really klutzy, and that's mm-hmm. okay. Hmm. So it got me thinking, you know, there this anime, among with several others that I could mention, just kind of makes it acceptable. Is it, it a comedy anime? Yeah, it's meant to be like a romantic comedy mm-hmm. because there are some scenes where he does fall in love with this girl, and she starts falling in love with him. So it is... Was it, this after he had creeped on her or whatever? Yes. Because, okay. <laughs> you know, again, you know, really, he's just been really sweet. He's just... Terrible at expressing himself. Well, that's probably not uncommon either in the Japanese culture. From what I've read, there's a, a you know a big problem with people being very insular and mm-hmm. keeping to themselves and not uh, you know interacting with people in real life. But that doesn't mean that they don't want to, right? Like people right. desire human contact, they desire socializing with others, and the culture does do, doesn't seem to really propagate that. Who knows what it could be, but the. You know, those kinds of things of anime just points out these certain habits that they have and try to make light of it. But Are there any it, sequels to Love, Hina, or is it just a one-off? Uh, that was just the one season, which was 26 episodes. Well, oh, two seasons. Oh, it's a season. I missed yeah, that point. Okay, more episodes. coming up here in moments. 855 450 free. You can join us here on Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. The erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Hi, John Hubner from Midas Resources. Are you tired of watching your hard-earned assets dwindle away? As government spending is out of hand and the Federal Reserve is creating in excess of $20 billion a week, are you tired of stockbrokers gambling away your hard-earned money? Is this market a setup for a crash greater than 1987? Too many of today's policies resemble those that led to the collapse of 1929. This is John Hubner, and that was me in 2007. And we all know what happened when the subprime credit bubble burst. By March 2009, the dollar lost 50% of its value. The entire U.S. banking system was on the verge of collapsing. Like all financial problems of the past, is history about to repeat itself? Call me, John Huebner, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 129, before it's too late to protect yourself. Will the oncoming catastrophe take all private IRAs, 401ks with it? There is a way to protect your hard-earned assets. Call me, John Huebner, at 1-800-686. 2237 extension 129. Free Talk Live. I'm sure I can speak for many of thousands. I don't fear illegals. I don't want them here and their filth that they bring with and the disease that they bring with. All the people who work in the stores and the markets and the restaurants are overwhelmingly Hispanic and they seem very clean and be doing a fine job here and I never heard anything about problems with disease. For you to defend the illegal immigrants and I'm not sure as I said earlier which host at what time is very condescending. Um, Madam, I will defend anybody that is peaceful and looking for a better life for themselves. We already well, pointed I don't, out. I, I don't defend them. I, I wish that people like you. You would say have that Mexicans are filthy and you call me condescending, lady? You say no, they're I, disease ridden and filthy and they, I'm condescending? And they are. And they are. And You're I outrageous. Do live You're out of here. Thank you for the she's, call. She's had all her rope. She's hung herself. Free Talk Live. Seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves. Apparently, Google is going to be launching its own wireless carrier. Uh, we can talk about that coming wireless up Wireless phone? Yeah, internet? That's right. So uh, Google Voice will actually be decent? We'll talk about it here in a little bit. 855-450 free. It's not going to be called Google Voice, though. Uh, that's mm -hmm. something different. I don't know if they're going to tie it in Maybe somehow. Maybe they'll tie it in. I don't know. There's a new name for whatever this is going to be, and we can talk about that in hour three. But we're still talking about train groping because, well, you know what? It's fascinating. Um, <laughs> it's fascinating in that in Japan uh, that it is uh, so common that it is not something that, in fact, according to the story here over at, that I have over at japanfortheuninvited.com, they claim that in 2001, a survey of two private high schools in Tokyo revealed that more than 70% of the students, it doesn't say female students, it says more than 70% of the students had been groped on the train. Now, maybe it was female-only high school. I don't know. But uh, that's, a, that's a high number. That's whether really it's, high. Yes. Whether it's female-only or all of the uh, you know male and female, then 70% is a lot of people who've been groped. In Japan, they say more than 4,000 men are arrested each year for groping on public transport. A recent survey of Japanese companies suggested that at least 17% of Japanese women have been groped in public. And based on how common it seems to be, that, that number sounds low. Uh, so anyway... Here's uh, more from the story. The mid-1990s brought a nationwide police crackdown on train gropers. Plain clothes police officers were assigned to the worst affected trains during rush hour. Advertising campaigns gave advice to women who thought they were being molested to thrust the offending hand in the air and yell, Chikan! Groper! Unfortunately, this hasn't emboldened many Japanese women. Surrounded by strangers, most women would rather pretend nothing unusual is happening than create a scene. Gropers exploit this and pick their victims carefully. Some of the victims aren't so innocent, and false accusations of groping are increasing. The shame associated with Chikan makes it possible for especially enterprising young women to blackmail fellow train users. That's an interesting twist on this whole controversy. Interesting. Uh, faced with a hysterically shrieking woman, most men are willing to be led to the nearest ATM and part with large sums of money. Up to $3,000 in U.S. dollars is not uncommon, claims this website. An obvious solution to the problem is to introduce a gropers-only carriage, and then the randy little tykes might fondle each other to death. <laughs> Instead, women-only carriages have been introduced at peak times on the most crowded lines. A guard is usually present to enforce this, politely telling any man who fails to read the pink sign. Have you ever observed this? I mean, you've said you've ridden the, the trains a lot in Tokyo. Have you ever noticed the, the, the women-only cars? You know, I have not. I don't know if that's... How old is this article, by This chance? article is t 2004. Okay, so it was before I went there. No, um, I trying to think if they would have it in different kinds of districts. I definitely did not see anything like that when I was there. It doesn't sound, again, this is a decade-old article, so who right. knows how it's changed over the, the last decade. And maybe they got rid of them. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe we should look into that. What's the status of the women-only carriages in Japan? I know they have hotels that are separated by sex, but really? that's all, but that's always been that way. They, they even have wow. a old ends where men sleep on one side, women sleep on the other, and they still are like that to this day. That but is that's, fascinating. That's hotels. They've also trends. got these weird hotels where basically you're sleeping in a dresser drawer type thing. Oh, you mean a capsule hotel. Oh, those are so cool. I don't know if that's what they're called or yeah, not, but basically you're- You sleep in a what? You're sleeping in like a dresser drawer where huh. the thing, Think you pull like, it out. Okay. 
there's a bed and like a little TV huh. and enough space to where like you can recline yourself a little bit, yeah. but not fully sit up. Like, Essentially, it's just like the a bed high and a end. You can actually sit up in this thing, and you pay oh. like thirty dollars a night to sleep in a dresser drawer, and, and they're stacked this? on to, in, in Japan. Tokyo, in Japan. There are those places in New York City where you can go and like take a nap in a relatively small sort of capsule from what I've oh, seen. Oh, are there really? I okay. don't know what they're called. I know we talked about them years ago here on Free Talk Live. So I think those things can exist in the United States as well. They could exist anywhere in the world, yeah. possibly even on you know the moon if the moon ever gets <laughs> colonized. <laughs> like there, There's no limitations <laughs> on where you can put these dresser drawer beds. The main purpose of a capsule hotel would be for the drunken businessman that can't get on the train, so he books a cheap hotel, mm-hmm. or the man that doesn't want to go back to his screaming wife at the end of a long night. It's just those very temporary kinds of hotels. So the women-only carriages has generally alleviated the problem. Again, this is a decade ago. It's still happening. But there has been an unexpected side effect. Any woman who finds herself outside the rosy sanctum of the women-only car is viewed as fair game. After all, if she didn't want her intimate parts mauled, then she wouldn't be in the regular cars. If you don't want to be groped, you shouldn't be a woman. The behavior of women in the safe zone has also drawn complaints. Momentarily freed from the rigid sexist expectations of Japanese society, a carriage of OLs. What does that mean, Dan? Could you o- know what an OL is? Uh, no, it doesn't sound familiar at all. OLs. Carriage of OLs can adjust their makeup and prattle away on their phones as much as they like, huh. drawing complaints from other passengers. Meanwhile, what of the gropers? Who's thinking about the degenerates? All they ever wanted was to reach out and touch another human being <laughs> on the buttocks, maybe on the breasts. Is that a crime? Fortunately, help is at hand. You need look no further than Shigeru Ohori. Elite Salariman, loving husband, father, the head of Chikan Tomo no Kai, the Gropers Brotherhood. He has assembled a 40-strong group of deviants from all walks of life, including teachers, government officials, and a Buddhist priest. Uh, Buddhism seems to have an ambiguous attitude to molesting strangers in public places. Not just any horny freak can join, though. A black belt fifth Dan, uh, Dan Groper, is expected to cop 100 sleazy feels a month. According to Uhuri, gropers come in two main categories. Orthodox gropers, about 80% of the fondling population, get their kicks from the girl's look of disgust and embarrassment. The technician is a rarer and far more admirable breed. With practiced technique, they subtly titillate their gropies into a state of subconscious arousal. So I I stand corrected. Apparently, some of these gropers are trained in the art of groping. (laughs) Yeah, they've got different levels and uh, brotherhood. If this is to be believed, I don't know how I don't know how legit this is, but it's pretty entertaining. Uh, Anyway, going on here, the Chikan elite meets uh, meet once a month in a Tokyo cafe to touch base and play with some new ideas. Over the internet, they warn each other of police crackdowns on certain train lines. They even run practical mauling workshops, hiring girls to be bothered by them on crowded commuter trains and offering criticism and tips. There are special image clubs, Imikura, catering for Chikan, with tailor-made rooms built to look like subway carriages and prostitutes paid extra to act like unsuspecting commuters. And that's great! I mean, that's that sounds like the right way to, to handle this. I mean, if you are going to be interested in groping, then finding a woman who's willing to consent and pretend like she's not consenting in a sort of staged train car area, you know, like a, a groping holodeck, if you will, uh, that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, that seems to be the appropriate way to if you're gonna if there's an appropriate way to do this that would seem to be the the least offensive. So O L is office lady, ah. which would be a low tier female office worker. And I've also found that according to Wikipedia, the first instance of a women's only car in Japan on the train was in 1912. Oh wow! There's a law Wait. from the year 1900 that provides for a 10 yen fine 
for male passengers who enter a female-only railway car Are or you waiting room. that groping has been going on for more than 100 years? <gasps> that is not necessarily what I am suggesting. Okay. I am suggesting that women-only cars on trains have been around for about 100 years. Hmm. So, in the words of the sensei for the Gropers Club, quote, Groping was once a solitary activity, but now, thanks to the internet, it's become easy to link up with people who share the same kind of sexual interests. Oh my goodness. So, there you go. That's uh, that's our delving into groping. I think we've gone about far enough on the subject. But again, the phone lines are always open, and you are free to join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Whether you've been to Japan or not... Uh, have you been the victim of a groping? And what happened in your case? In Danica's case, she didn't know who the vi- who the groper was. Mm-hmm. So there really wasn't much you could, much you could do besides leave the area. Um, but, you know, was there a situation where you were able to confront this person? And how'd that go? 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. Whether you've been in Tokyo or elsewhere, 855-450-3733. Coming up, Google apparently is getting ready to enter the wireless carrier service for your cell phone. We'll tell you more about that here in a moment, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. Plus, no book reading allowed on the school bus. We've yet to get to that story. That's right. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. The results are in. For the treatment of nasal allergy symptoms, nothing is more effective than Nasacort. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour is prescription-strength medicine that's scent and alcohol-free with no harsh taste. It's non-addictive and provides 24-hour relief of the worst nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion, with no prescription needed. And in a recent clinical study with Nasacort going nose-to-nose with Flonase, more people prefer Nasacort. For more information, visit Nasacort.com. Nasacort. Uses directed. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.80 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,188 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $233. Antiwar.com reports, between the Iraq and Afghanistan occupations, the United States has had an awful lot of occasions to kill innocent civilians and has adopted the regional practice of paying blood money to the families of the slain in compensation for the deaths. The amount can vary from a few hundred to thousands of dollars depending on how keen the U.S. is to placate a given victim's family. In the wake of yesterday's admission that they killed a pair of Western hostages in Pakistan, the White House seems to be trying to adapt this practice to Western victims 
Adams as well, saying they intend to make payments of compensation to the families of American Warren Weinstein and Italian Giovanni Lo Porto. While wrongful death compensation is not an entirely foreign concept in the West, the White House's combination of these payments with an insistence that the killings were in accordance with international law likely will not sit well with many. The families of the slain aid workers were already criticizing the administration for its inconsistent response to the initial hostage taking and are likely to see the pledge of money as trying to buy their silence on the matter, particularly with the administration so clear that the killings are not going to spark any real policy change. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Coinbase has more than 1 million consumer wallets and is trusted by over 25,000 merchants, including Overstock.com, Khan Academy, Reddit, and of course, FPP. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports Comcast may abandon its plan to purchase Time Warner Cable for $45 million. An unnamed source told the New York Times of the cable company's intent to drop their bid after intense regulatory scrutiny by the U.S. Department of Justice. Comcast, Time Warner, and the Federal Communications Commission offer no comment on the news, but a DOJ spokesperson told CNBC that the department will continue its review of the deal. The DOJ said it was not aware of anything related to a plan to drop the deal. The news comes one day after representatives from Comcast met with federal regulators from the DOJ. Justice officials who are responsible for ensuring any merger does not violate antitrust laws met with the cable representatives as the agency nears its final recommendation as to whether the merger should be allowed or not. The DOJ and FCC are each reviewing the proposal for effectively the same reason to see if a joint Comcast Time Warner company is free of potential violations and in the public's best interest. Regulators' primary concern concern is that the merger would result in a company that wields too much power and makes it extremely difficult for competitors to survive. Comcast, already the nation's largest cable distributor, wanted to buy Time Warner so it could acquire millions of subscribers in the United States' largest markets like New York City and Los Angeles. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports former U.S. military commander and CIA director David Petraeus was sentenced to two years of probation and ordered to pay a $100,000 fine, but was spared time in prison on Thursday after he pled guilty to mishandling classified information. The retired four-star general apologized as he admitted in federal court in Charlotte, North Carolina, to giving the information to his mistress, who was writing his biography. He agreed under a plea deal to a misdemeanor charge of unauthorized removal and retention of classified material. U.S. Magistrate Judge David Kiesler raised the fine from $40,000 that had been recommended to the maximum possible financial penalty for the charge, noting it needed to be higher to be punitive and reflect the gravity of the offense. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. <laughs> if you're a parent, chances are you know all about the spooky truth books with subjects ranging from shadowy fraternal organizations to mind-controlling TV shows. Kids can't get enough of this series of short, scary children's novels. And spooky truth author K.L. Graves is joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Now, my kids just love these books. In just four years, you put out 25 books. <laughs> it came from Tower 7, Curse of the Chemtrails, The Zionist Who Cried Holocaust. Now, this stuff has really been catching on. Over 40 million copies sold. So many bestsellers out 
there. Oh, I've been thrilled. Before this series, I was self-publishing pamphlets and handing them out on the train. Now I get emails from teachers and parents all the time telling me that my books are all their kids can talk about. Oh, well, it's true. My son used to hate to read. Now he's holed up in the basement with these spooky truth books all day and night. Says he never watches TV, doesn't even want tap water anymore. He just loves reading so much. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, we're back with Free Talk Live. Kicking off the third hour of the program, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we've got waiting for you there. Once again, that's freetalklive.com with you in studio tonight. It's Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. Uh, coming up, the story that Danica, I believe, brought in this evening about a school bus. Well, it was actually suggested by our listeners over at freetalklive.com. Yes. You selected it as something you thought was interesting. A uh, school bus that has banned the reading of books. Is that right? Not necessarily banning. He's telling this girl that it's too dangerous to read. Well, you might learn something. Uh, that's not the reason, but we'll get to that in a second. All so right. not necessarily banning, although who knows what it could be uh, turned into. The school board has ruled that the school bus driver has the right to make the rules on the bus. Really? I'm going to hear, let's jump right into sure. this. Because we can talk about Google and their new tech here in a little bit. But. Yeah, totally. This comes from Reason Magazine. Uh, they got it from uh, cbc.ca, which is a Canadian website. Canadian, the, yeah. yeah, this comes so this straight happened from, in Canada? Yes, okay. uh, in Quebec, actually. Uh, an eight-year-old girl in, and I'm going to butcher this, so I do apologize, St. jean jour de Richelieu in Quebec, pardon my French, was told <laughs> that she was no longer allowed to read, to read books on the school bus because it poses a risk to the safety of other students. Sarah Ager loves reading and used to enjoy using her 20-minute ride to and from school to read for pleasure. But recently, her bus driver told her she had to stop. She says that she... She was told reading poses a threat to other students on the bus. The bus driver suggested that they might stand up to see what she was reading, or she might. No, poke they won't. Her. They're all too busy looking at their smartphones. <laughs> yeah, or playing on their 3DSs. She might also poke herself in the eye with the corners of a book, which is hilarious because wow. don't school buses not have seatbelts? So no, they right, do but not, you can't generally. poke yourself in the eye with the non existent seatbelt. Well, I'm just saying that you get into an accident or stop suddenly, everyone's going to go flying forward and hit their head on the seats. But this girl has this book, and she's not posing a threat with it. When has anyone ever poked their eye in with a book before? I mean, I'm sure it's happened at least once. I'm surprised that I've never done it. Just because you read that much, or you're reading a lot and clumsy, or what? Because I'm clumsy. Okay. Well, yeah, I was just going to say you're just really clumsy. And I also, I fell up the stairs last week. Yeah, okay, that's 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 no good. You you, didn't you also get a quote-unquote un concussion from moving a refrigerator? A small refrigerator, I might add. Said okay. multiple concussions. Okay, so let, let me explain the moving the refrigerator concussion. <laughs> so, Is this recent? A uh, few months ago, okay. six, eight months, I don't know, it might oh, have six been. Six months, yeah. Yeah, something. So I was moving a refrigerator in the Keen Activist Center, a small one, mm -hmm. from downstairs to into the computer room. Yeah. And I got it there, no problem. And where I, where I had set it, part of the ceiling juts out oh, really I low. That part. And I bent down to grab the wire for the refrigerator to plug it in. Yeah, and then Black. when I bent down, I didn't pay attention that that's Ugh. where the ceiling. And uh, basically, I head butted a uh, two by see, four. Usually, that'll get me when I'm coming back up. So I'll like go underneath. So on my side, there's, so we're on a duplex here, and I have the exact same piece of wood or whatever right. that is, uh, the exact same structure, the jutting out of this the ceiling yes. or this the wall, and uh, that's it, that's where my living room is is essentially. And so I've got some uh, like uh, receivers and electronic equipment there. So I'll go back there to like pull a cable out of something, and yeah, then, I, I didn't get that low. Right. I. Leaned forward and basically head well, butted a two to get by low, four. Daryl, you should get low. Well, that's what I'm saying. I would, I will do the reverse. So yeah. I'll see it there and I will avoid it when I go down in to do whatever it is I'm going to do, and then promptly forget about it, and then come back up at full blast, and then thwack the back of my head. And oh. yeah, so, so I, I fell to the ground, I, and 
I, I would not have answered a 10 count if it was a boxing match. And I hollered. Wow. I, I hollered for Johnny, who used to be a co-host on Free Talk Live. Right. And he came upstairs and said, what's wrong? I said, I'm dead. <laughs> Johnny, I'm dead. I'm dead, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and he just stood there and laughed for a second and said, is there anything I can do? I was like, yeah, here's the cord. Plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit yourself on the way down. Um, all right, so back to the story here. The school bus. So young young girl, what was this elementary school girl, right? Yeah, little girl named Sarah Ager. She loves reading. Good and, for her, yeah. by the way. I mean, be, kids should be encouraged to read and these days. And that's exactly what her father's saying. He's proud of his daughter for wanting to read and loves to read, and he wants to encourage her to do as soon as possible and thinks that this rule is obviously very stupid. Is I, reading rainbow still a thing? They just started a Kickstarter to bring it back. Do you oh, remember wow. reading Rainbow? With LeVar Burton, right? Yes. Yeah. Jordy, you mean. Yeah. I For the longest time, I did not know that that guy was an actor. <laughs> I just thought it was just somebody that had a show on PBS Called teaching Rainbow. kids, like, here's books to read. I used to love that show, and I would make a list of, like, all the books, mm. and I never read all of them. Oh, you have to put that on your bucket list then, I guess. I don't have the list anymore. Okay. If you contributed, I believe, $1,000 to the Kickstarter, you got a chance to uh, wear the visors and take a picture with it. So you missed out <laughs> on that opportunity. I'm not a Trekkie. I don't care about the <laughs> Star Wars thing. It's not Star Wars. Don't make me come over there, Daryl. I'm very protective of that. But anywho, moving on. No, so, it's great that she is uh, interested in reading. It oh, seems, yeah. I mean, it, does it count when... I mean, I spend all day reading things on the internet, but it just doesn't feel like it counts to me unless it's oh, in a book. Th- right. That's why ebooks annoy me. Because it doesn't feel like reading? It doesn't feel like reading. Yeah. Like, I, I've downloaded some ebooks and used the Amazon Cloud Reader to read the books, but it still feels like I'm just reading things from the internet. Oh, I love my Kindle. I, I read more now that I have a Kindle. I still love having a physical book, but. Having a Kindle is the best thing in the world. Did I, I see something recently, a Possibly. headline, about uh, the ebooks are are kind of flan- uh, floundering, that they're you know maybe losing popularity to uh, the old paperback really? style? Really? Hmm. You may have read that. I don't I know if it's accurate. I swear I saw a headline about that. I'm interested. Gonna, in I'm going to see if that. I can dig that well, one up. Well, one thing, since we're talking about e-books, yeah. and I wonder if they would have given her problems if she was reading from an e-reader, because, you know, those things have corners as yeah, well. Yeah, but they, ha- they typically have rounded corners. They don't right, have sharp but corners. No, that they're going to have to get, unless it's made by Apple, they're going to have to get rid of the rounded corners because Apple holds the patent on rounded corners on rectangular things. Oh, my goodness. The cell phone that I have, which is a Samsung something another Galaxy something, has rounded corners. Apple was found to, or rather Samsung was found to be in violation of the patent for using rounded corners. Oh, that is so you ridiculous. Know, obviously, when I saw this phone that says Samsung in big letters on I the front an and, and back. I think it has rounded corners. I thought it was an Apple iPhone. Oh, come like, on. Like, I, I totally got confused well, at least you... because of the rounded corners. Well, they should all have rounded corners to prevent people from poking their eye in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you might poke your eye on a bus. Speaking of the e-books... One thing that annoys me is that a lot of publishers will charge the same price for the ebook that they charge for the print book. That's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. They're using way way less materials. There's no virtually no overhead for an electronic (laughs) book. Right. The the only overhead you have is if you're paying somebody two hundred dollars to convert from whatever file you send to the Mm -hmm. printer to the file that you need to send for the ebook. So, yeah, you're paying the technicians, uh, the electronic right. or the uh, you know, the IT guys or whatever you want to call them to to do that. The yeah. wizards, the tech wizards. So, I dig I dug around. We'll get back to the girl in the school bus here in a moment, but uh, since we're on this tangent here, this is from March 27th and I, I saw something more recent, but this is recent enough. It's it's from this year. Uh, from the Digital Publishing News for the 21st Century, DBW, digitalbookworld.com. How do younger readers want to read? If you go by the numbers, so-called digital natives, because millennials are being raised on digital devices and whatever the next generation is after millennials certainly will be, 
Uh, one recent survey shows U.S. readers ages 18 to 34, which would be the highest you know, tech group, most likely to have a smartphone in their pocket group, almost are twice as likely to read a print book as an ebook on any device. Interesting. And while Pew researchers cool. found uh, ebooks' popularity to be highest among the 18 to 29 year old block in its own latest study, that same demographic was more likely than any of the three older age groups to read a print book. More coming up here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. The erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. Who told you to go this way? You can't do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This no, is you ain't gonna make. Wait, 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 because you're scared me. Property. What am I being, being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 this is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM.
It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. With you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And, of course, you can join us online anytime you want over at freetalklive.com. Plus, check out Freedoms Phoenix. They're uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies over at freedomsphoenix.com every day. Readers over there are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go now to freedomsphoenix.com. Get signed up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. We're talking about books and apparently there's some surprising news, according to the Internet. This is a story from, let's see, the site is uh, it's a book-related website. I had it pulled up a moment ago, and I've lost track of it here. Uh, but anyway, what they're saying is that there are a surprising number of young people who are actually reading regular old books, printed books. According to, here it is, uh, the... DBW, Digital Publishing News for the 21st Century, digitalbookworld.com, that a recent survey shows U.S. readers ages 18 to 34 are almost twice as likely to read a print book as an ebook on any device. Plus, they found that ebooks' popularity to be the highest amongst young people, 18 to 29. Um, however, in the Pew, in a Pew study, that same demographic was more likely than any of the three older age groups in the sample to read a print book, meaning that the youngest demographic, 79% of them, were reading print books. Very cool. Uh, Alex Segura, SVP of Publicity and Marketing at Archie Comics, put it in a talk yesterday called Designing Books for Tomorrow's Readers. Uh, he said, quote, if the story's good, the rest will follow. That's hardly an adage most in the book world would sneeze at. The debate heats up, though, around what constitutes the rest and in what ways it follows the story. For Benjamin Alfonsi, creative director of publishing startup Metabook, the rest is where publishers have failed readers utterly. Quote, readers want more. They're expecting more, he said, uh, that he thinks content needs to jump out at you in an age when consumers, particularly younger ones, are accustomed to getting a multi-sensory overload from their media diet. Metabook aims to do enhanced books one better with what Alfonsi calls, quote, an all-out assault on the senses approach. The publisher's digital products so far exclusively for iOS combine written text with audio interviews, music, performed narration, 3D interactive features, and other forms of supplemental content. Sounds like a website. Yeah, that, that does not does. sound at all like reading a book. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like watching some sort of weird 3D hologram movie. Now, obviously, this guy's pitching his product, right? In Alfonsi's view, quote, we're losing an entire generation of readers because the reading experience itself has become so unengaging. With his product, they, uh, they claim it's visceral, it's sexy, it's imaginative, it's immersive, it's visual, it's sensory, it's everything. He says it has to be everything. However, now we're back to the article here. Uh, digitalbookworld.com says, by and large, though, the market has not shown that to be true. Nearly a year ago, ebook developer and digital content strategist Peter Costanzo revisited an argument that industry leader Evan Schnittman made about enhanced digital content back in 2011 and found that it still held, held up pretty well. The gist of his case was that thanks to the wide variability among e-reading platforms, most readers were unable to experience the full range of interactive features that publishers otherwise could and did make available to them. The chicken and egg scenario that creates uh, that, that creates remains largely in force today, with optimists believing that if only more readers could uniformly access the enhanced content, demand for it would rise. Publishers would then invest more in producing and distributing it, and the all-out assault in the senses approach would stand a better chance of becoming the default e-reading experience. In the meantime, though, the market for enhanced digital book content, including among millennials, is likely to remain very modest. Not only do those younger readers appear perfectly happy with a print book in one hand and a Snapchat running smartphone in the other, many authors still meet with considerable distribution and business incentives to publish their work the old-fashioned way. Now, uh, Daryl, you are a book publisher. Yes. You have a website. It's fpp.cc where you uh, sell and publish books, and uh, you do sell e-versions of those books, correct? Yes. Uh, I have those available, and I found that... 
there are very few times that the ebook sells better than the print book. Yeah, that was one of the questions. Generally, I was ask. one thing that you can do with the ebook that you cannot do as easily with the print book is a giveaway. Right. So Amazon right. will allow you to give using the distribution that I use, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. You can set up to five days per quarter, so five mm -hmm. days every 90, to give away a book. And if you do this and you do it, I, I want to say the right way to where you set it up and you promote it and say for the next three days this book's going to be free or you know at the end of March, whatever. Mm -hmm. you know You set it up, you promote it. And you can get a lot of downloads of the book, and occasionally that will actually turn into people purchasing the book. You can also set things up to where if someone purchases the physical book, they can download the ebook for free oh, or cool. at a reduced price. So there, there are things that you can do to sort of help distribute the book. And you might not be making money by distributing the book, and that's really what people are printing books for, right. is to make money. But at the same time, there are books that people just want people to read. Right. So, you know, there, there are various ways that you can do this, but I, I do find that the... Physical books do generally sell a little bit better. Generally. So has there been an exception to that rule where there was a book that you can remember that, that really did great on ebook compared to print? Uh, again, it, it would be one of those to where I've run a promotion and wound up getting like 100 downloads yeah, in a can, couple of days. If you're talking about freebies, I don't think you could count that. No, I think right. I would say that. So I, I don't recall offhand. Mm -hmm. You know, if there was a book where I sold more ebooks in a month than the physical books. And so when I say generally, I'm talking not necessarily from my experience, but from what I know to where there are times where ebooks will sell better than a physical for whatever reason. Sometimes people will only do an ebook because it's easier to do. You don't have the overhead, you don't have to worry about. You know, is somebody going to buy this? I've bought a thousand copies to try to sell mm -hmm. and various other things. But I like doing both the physical and the ebook. Just that way there's multiple options for people. You can share your thoughts with us here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. There's a story over at Barron's. Uh, which I cannot access because they have some paywall on the front of their website here. But I have to say, it looks uh, it looks interesting. And this is the story I think I was talking about that I saw within the last week. Maybe I can find another version of it. Usually there's somebody else reporting on this. Uh, but they say here that two years ago, ebooks seemed to be an existential threat to printed books, leading to predictions that at least 50% of books would be read in digital form. However, it looks like ebook sales have hit a plateau. Mm. Uh, and printed books are now enjoying sales growth. It's Free Talk Live. There's more coming up here. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? 
take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial on in toll free to join us here. Share your thoughts on print versus ebooks. Apparently, ebook sales have plateaued within about the last year or so, and print book sales are on an uptick. Now, obviously, print book sales have gone down over time over the last decade. That's why businesses, uh, entire companies like, what was it, Borders Books? Cl- yes. Closed all of their stores. Yeah. What about three or four years ago? It seems like at this point, probably three, less than three years. Um, I was like living that. in Texas at the time. So it must have been three years ago then. Uh, over a little over three years. Yeah. Um, so I, you're welcome to share your thoughts here. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty three. Let's go, uh, and you can bring up anything that you want. Let's go to Howard in Philly via Skype. Hello, Howie. Hi, Danica, Ian, and Daryl. Hey there. How are you? Good. Go ahead, sir. This is great. I wanted to really call in because earlier tonight you were talking like like these Japanese fetishes and stuff. It brought up like a lot of thoughts. And I also want to say that I really enjoy Danica on the radio on Friday night. She's like, she is the only female host on LRN really right now involved with Free Talk Live. And I really appreciate her stepping up. And she's, she's awesome. I mean, Danny, I really appreciate you. I just want to get past that. Thanks. But my thoughts are is what you were saying earlier about when you were reading the stories about these Japanese and how it is where there's this uh, oppression with with women in their culture. And it's just that does disgust me because I feel bad for anyone 
who feels like so oppressed that they can't speak up for their own rights and try to say, like, if somebody's molesting them, just to get the hell off of them, you know? It's like, I mean, with the Japanese culture, I, I just regret that because a lot of women do feel ashamed. And it's like a lot of uh, Asian women will cover their mouths when they smile or laugh just because yeah, that's true. they're it's so ingrained true. to them. Laugh and 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 Danica, I'm impressed with your knowledge of um Japanese culture. That's oh, really cool. But actually, I wanted to move on to because like being because I am a, a half Japanese guy. Like my father is uh, Japanese and Filipino, and my mother's Irish and Italian. And I can just tell you from growing up, just like you know, a kid, the racism I felt like you know, I would have people constantly call me a chink or you know Chinese mm. or just you know just stupid stuff and it's something that i learned how to deal with you know in my life but i can understand like how anybody who feels like you know they're picked on or something like that might you know would feel they're they wrong in the japanese in the japanese influence that you had growing up did you have any sort of experience with perverted exception at all no i didn't everybody i knew who's japanese in my life has been really great people i mean the i worked at benihana of tokyo when i was like a young kid is my first job in high school the people who i know are japanese are the most hard-working people i've ever met and i actually when i went to live in hawaii and live with my relatives there i actually realized because i grew up on the east coast i have i i might be like half asian i know nothing about really being japanese or asian it's like a total whole different like concept of way they think of things and it's just i just grew up in a i grew up around white people my mother's white you know that's how it was so you never but really I, you had know, the the asian influence on your life correct i haven't i grew up on the white around white people that's gotcha. what i know and i know i know what it's like to be like you know i always felt different and stuff but you know i'm not trying to call in and try to say that you know i'm not trying to talk about that my point was it's just you were talking about the japanese influences and stuff it's just hard you know people will respect like you know everybody's just a person but i do think that like people do look at people of other races with prejudice and i always you know the point that i really thought of is that when you brought up that point earlier about what you were talking about japanese culture do you think they that that the United States would have dropped an atomic bomb on Germany? I just feel like, you know, every time I was growing up when the people would call me a chink and, you know, try to, you know, just discredit me, there is so much racism. And I don't think that the United States would have dropped an atomic bomb on Germany because they're white people. It's an interesting question. It's so it's inter you know, very interesting. Question. Japanese, it was so easy for them to look at the Japanese people, it's just like insects, but I don't blame them because it was a war and, you know, the, the propaganda where the Japanese were very violent people. They would chop your head off. They would do anything they could to kill you. They're intense, but you know, it's just, I don't know. It's just, I, I'm learning a lot in life. I try to learn life, you know, every day, but that's what my first thought was, but I have my own, the way I think of it. And like, this sure. it was just interesting to me. So, Howard, thanks for uh, sharing your thoughts tonight. Yeah. Do appreciate it. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Uh, so you can join us here. You can also join us via Skype and sound really good, like how we just did. Yeah, that was great reception. Skype username is lrn dot fm. So I've I've looked and looked and looked, and I cannot find. Uh, you know, I guess kudos to Barons there for uh, their. <laughs> They're the only site on the internet that I can find that's talking about this ebook plateau and the the current sales of uh, ebooks versus print books. Um, and I'm not going to pay their their fee to <laughs> to read whatever. You it mean is you that don't want saying. to pay like five dollars a month to be able to read that one article yeah, no. off of Barron's? Thirty articles a month. Think about it. But I did find this from the Huffington Post from uh, February, February 27th. Sorry, ebooks. These nine studies show why print is better. Don't lament the lost days of cutting your fingers on pristine new novels or catching a whiff of that magical transportive old book smell just yet. A slew of recent studies show that print books are still popular even among, among millennials. What's more, 
Further research suggests this trend may save demonstrably, demonstrably successful learning habits from certain death. Take comfort in these nine studies that show that print books have a promising future. Younger people are more likely to believe that there's useful information that's only available offline. With 62% of citizens under 30 subscribing to this belief, only 53% of those 30 and older agree. These findings are from a promising study released last year by Pew Research, which also found the millennials are more likely to visit their local library. So there's like a belief system among millennials that there's hidden knowledge that is not on the internet and uh, can only be found in books, is what that sounds like. And... To some extent, they're right. There is a lot of stuff that can only be found in books. Because it hasn't been put online yet. And lots of libraries have computers, too. Students are more likely to buy physical textbooks. A study conducted by Student Monitor and featured in the Washington Post shows that 87% of textbook spending for the fall 2014 semester was on print books. Of course, this could be due to the professors assigning fewer ebooks, which is why it's fascinating that students opt for physical copies of humanities books even when digital versions are available for free. While students prefer reading digital texts for science and math class, they like to study the humanities in print. A study conducted by the University of Washington in 2013 shows that 25% of humanities studies, or students bought physical versions of free ebooks. This isn't just true of textbooks. Teens prefer print books for personal use, too. Nielsen book scan numbers from 2014 revealed the main reasons why teens buy books. Quote, I've enjoyed authors' previous books, unquote, ranked number one, followed by browsing in libraries and browsing in bookstores, which both ranked above online bookseller websites. In-store displays also ranked above hearing about a book through a social network. So that's shocking to me. I mean, given that teenagers seem to always be on their cell phones, it's a surprise. Right, or a tablet or a computer. It does, and this is actually surprising to me because I really thought that ebooks were just going to kind of keep taking off students don't connect emotionally with on-screen text a 2012 study featured in the guardian gave half its participants a story on paper and the other half the same story on a screen the result ipad readers didn't feel the story was as immersive and therefore weren't able to connect with it on an emotional level Further, those who read on paper were much more capable of placing the story's events in chronological order. I would have to agree with that. Interesting. We'll Fascinating. talk more about that when we come back. Yeah, let's do that here in a moment. 855-450 free. Uh, maybe the ebook isn't really what it's cracked up to be. What about audiobooks? I don't think they talk about that in this. It's a good question. 855-450 free. You can take control. I imagine audiobooks are fairly immersive to people. But uh, more coming up. Sure. It's Free Talk Live. When we needed $5,000 for a medical emergency, a friend told us about Avant. They use their own risk evaluation software to calculate a personalized interest rate, one that works for us. The whole process took minutes and didn't affect our credit score. We've helped over 100,000 Americans get the money they need fast. And with Avant, you'll never pay hidden fees or be penalized for paying off your loan early. Right now, Avant will also give you a $50 Amazon.com gift card after your first installment is made on time. To check your rates risk-free and get this special offer, go to AvantOffer.com today and enter promo code 200 at checkout. That's www.avantoffer.com, promo code 200. Again, that's www.avantoffer.com, promo code 200. Loans are made by WebBank and by affiliates of Avant Incorporated. California loans offered by Avant will be made under financial lender's license number 603K124. Amazon is not a sponsor of this promotion. Other restrictions apply. See website for details. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic 
historic lows you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live in the remaining moments. Right here, we'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. Just dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. And uh, we're talking about books. I'm uh, pretty surprised by the news here that ebooks have kind of plateaued, apparently. The dramatic growth of the ebook industry has sort of tapered off, apparently. And uh, the print books are actually on a sales increase, at least according to an article over at Barron's. And then there's all these studies here that we're talking about from Huffington Post, where they've con uh, collected nine different studies that show various reasons why books, print books, are better than ebooks. And Danica, you were going to expound on one of these points. About what you said that physical books feel more immersive to the students. Yeah. I can definitely agree with that because when I'm taking a physical book and I want to reread a passage over again, it's a little bit easier for me to flip through the book, find the passage that I'm looking for, read through it, and really kind of feel connected to the book. Whereas in an ebook, I have to you know put in the search bar, I have to type in whatever word or phrase I want to look for, and hopefully find it in in that search bar. So when I was in when I was in school. I've had both ebooks and physical textbooks, and I always got more, uh, what's the word? Oh, more, I got more use out of the physical books than with the ebooks because mm. I felt that they helped me learn more. I could easily go back, look over my work. Sometimes if I used a highlighter, it was easier for me to do that than with an actual ebook. Now, don't get me wrong, I like reading on my Kindle, but I also place just as much. Um, pleasure in reading a physical book and i would never ever not want to read a physical book again yeah i mean the the idea of the ebook is a f it's a cool idea to have a bunch of books in a very very small space in the same way that we're used to that with our movies or mostly music i guess more so than than movies but i guess movies true uh, the same way because of like netflix i mean essentially it's a bunch of movies at your fingertips you don't have to do the storage with them though um but 
there's just something about, and, and I, whenever I've said this before, I've always felt like kind of old, right? But maybe not so much because apparently young people really like books now. Uh, but there's something about actually having something in your hands that's just, it's just more real. It's more tangible. It's, uh, it's just more palpable, I guess. And I like it better that way. And apparently younger people are liking it better that way too, which is really the surprise to me because I felt like I was out of touch, you know, because I like books, <laughs> not not uh, the ebooks. I don't have an ebook reader. I mean, I've got my smartphone, and I guess they have apps for that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, there's a Kindle yeah. app that you can do- that you can actually purchase Kindle books and read them on your phone. So you don't actually need a Kindle to do it. You can get the yeah. free Kindle app. But I mean, I've I've there's you know. also the Amazon Cloud Reader that just runs as sort of a plug-in to your browser. I've downloaded books in PDF form before, just yeah. on my computer, and I just don't care about them. I'm just not interested in them. Like even if I see a title. That I'm that I would think that I would want to read. I just don't have the drive to do it. It's just not interesting to me. Now, to be fair, I'm not someone who spends a lot of time reading books. I there's like one side of me that wants to, but another side of me that's like, you're too busy. You can't do that. So really, the only time I spend reading books is on the toilet, um, <laughs> essentially, because that's when I have to make time. And even then, I have to make. A, I but have what to, if you're on a plane or sitting wing? Plane, plane? okay, yes, plane, yes. I've done. No, books on the a purpose plane. of airplanes is to take a nap. You can't always take a nap on an airplane, though. Um, I can. Anyway, let me jump back into this list of the nine studies showing why print books are better. So we found out that students don't connect with on-screen text like they do with print books, and that they also apparently comprehend less of the information presented in digital books. USA Today shared a 2013 study showing that students retain less when reading on a screen. The study's creator blamed this on the flash gimmicks embedded in many e-books. She also suspects being able to collectively turn to the same page enhances group discussion. Also, it's not just students who are opting for print. Parents and kids prefer to read physical books together, too. According to Digital Book World and literacy nonprofit Sesame Workshop, less than 10% of kids and parents alike choose ebooks over print books. Parents say fancy features such as videos and interactive games are more of a distraction than a valued tool, which makes sense because ebooks can negatively impact your sleep. A few months ago, The Guardian reported on a Harvard study linking e-reading and sleep deprivation. If the e-book was light-emitting, it took participants an average of 10 minutes longer to fall asleep than those who read physical books instead. And, finally, it's hard to avoid multitasking while reading digital books. In a blog for the Huffington Post, Naomi S. Barron wrote about the findings published in her new book, Words on Screen, The Fate of Reading in a Digital World. She says... Quote, studies I have done with university students in several countries confirm what I bet you'll find yourself observing. When reading either for school, work, or pleasure, the preponderance of students found it easiest to concentrate when reading in print. They also reported multitasking almost three times as much when reading on screen as when reading in hard copy. Mm. Which makes sense. I mean, if I mean, I imagine the Kindle doesn't have this, but if you're reading on a smartphone, you got all these text messages popping in on you or, you know, some kind of notification. Or, or a phone call. Or a call, which will all pull you out of the moment if or whatever you're the story reading was. Using, you know, like the cloud reader on your, you know, laptop or whatever, then You've got the little thing flashing. You've got notifications on Facebook. You've Ugh. got notifications uh, on Facebook. Notifications are like the bane of my existence sometimes. They just keep coming. Yeah. I, I used to, before I started going to the gym a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. I would not really be on Facebook to pay attention to what was going on, but I would be on Facebook to make sure I didn't have notifications. Yeah, that's a bad thing. Ugh. And, and now, I know like, I like. know that there's, you know, all kinds of groups on the side. I use the toolbars and mm-hmm. favorites and list and whatnot. There's all kinds of things where it's like 20 plus and I mean, eh, whatever. Like, I'll look at it when I look at it. So you're over it. Yeah, kind of. That's good. Like, I've got better things to do. Yeah, I have this. I don't know how to disable it, but on my phone, and I know that there is an option to do it, but. I got a new phone, and whenever it pops up a notification, it likes to set it on top of the bar. And whenever I'm trying to navigate near the top, then I click on that notification. It brings me back to it, and I just, I wish that it would mm. just do it in the background. I don't know how to turn it off from the top. So, well, this know. is not a tech show, so I I can't help you with that. <laughs> Brian Sovereign, where are Brian you? Brian at freetalklive.com. <laughs> so, 
Real quick, I, I want to make sure that we get this in before the end of what the show. This? I had looked up uh, the audiobook, like oh. how audiobooks compare to ebooks yeah. or physical. And the most recent data I was able to find was from October of last year from the American Association of Publishers. And there's another group that they compile data with. And they put, in terms of formats, downloadable audiobooks continued to be the fastest growing format. Wow. With a 26.2% growth over the first seven months compared to the same period from 2013. So first seven months Hmm. of 2014 saw a 26% growth from the first seven months of 2013. Interesting. Ebooks came in a distant second with an increase of 7.5%. That's interesting. Up to $937 million. Hardback dipped slightly with and sales of paperbacks grew by 5.3% huh. to $1.13 billion. That's so fantastic. Paperback is still, you know, bigger okay. than uh, ebook or audio, but, but it's actually audiobook that's growing faster. Than audio e-books. is growing faster, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that it's a more emerging market. So if you jump from 100 to 400, then that's a 26 percent increase. Well, but audiobooks have been around for a long time. What's they different have. now is digital delivery of audiobooks instead of having to go and get CDs or from tapes, bookstore. Yeah, yeah, right. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, it's more of an emerging market. Right. And it's also, in my opinion, more immersive to listen to something because it occupies, you know, you can hear it in the middle of your brain, right? Uh, as opposed it's to... It's one way to make a road trip be less time taking. I Oh, yeah. Yeah. I put in an audiobook and my friend had suggested, oh, yeah, put in an audiobook. It'll make your car travel go so much faster. And I was just thinking, no. And finally, I put in Gone Girl. I listened to Gone Girl. And it just made the trip seem so much shorter. It mm. was very immersive. It's a great audiobook if the if you haven't listened to it yet. And it, it made it a six hour trip seem to take like three hours wow. half the time. And uh, I, I know we were talking about the cost earlier of okay. ebook versus paperback. Right. And when I was trying to find info on what percentage of book sales or audiobook, et cetera, one of the questions that I came across in like the list of questions that are suggested was why are audiobooks so expensive? And the reason is because you have to pay people to produce them. That's true. And that's, that's not true. cheap. It's six hours of labor for each one hour of produced audio. Sounds about right. We're out of time for tonight. Check out Daryl's books. He's publishing them over at fpp.cc. And uh, we'll come back with more Free Talk Live tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.80 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,188 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $233. Antiwar.com reports, between the Iraq and Afghanistan occupations, the United States has had an awful lot of occasions to kill innocent civilians and has adopted the regional practice of paying blood money to the families of the slain in compensation for the deaths. The amount can vary from a few hundred to thousands of dollars depending on how keen the U.S. is to placate a given victim's family. In the wake of yesterday's admission that they killed a pair of Western hostages in Pakistan, the White House seems to be trying to adapt this practice to Western victims as well, saying they intend to make payments of compensation to the families of American Warren Weinstein and Italian Giovanni Lo Porto. While wrongful death compensation is not an entirely foreign concept in the West, the White House's combination of these payments with an insistence that the killings were in accordance with international law likely will not sit well with many. The families of the slain aid workers were already criticizing the administration for its inconsistent response to the initial hostage taking and are likely to see the pledge of money as trying to buy their silence on the matter, particularly with the administration so clear that the killings are not going to spark any real policy change. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Coinbase has more than 1 million consumer wallets and is trusted by over 25,000 merchants, including Overstock.com, Khan Academy, Reddit, and of course, FPP. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports Comcast may abandon its plan to purchase Time Warner Cable for $45 million. An unnamed source told the New York Times of the cable company's intent to drop their bid after intense regulatory scrutiny by the U.S. Department of Justice. Comcast, Time Warner, and the Federal Communications Commission offer no comment on the news, but a DOJ spokesperson told CNBC that the department will continue its review of the deal. The DOJ said it was not aware of anything related to a plan to drop the deal. The News comes one day after representatives from Comcast met with federal regulators from the DOJ. Justice officials who are responsible for ensuring any merger does not violate antitrust laws met with the cable representatives as the agency nears its final recommendation as to whether the merger should be allowed or not. The DOJ and FCC are each reviewing the proposal for effectively the same reason to see if a joint Comcast Time Warner company is free of potential violations and in the public's best interest. Regulators' primary concern concern is that the merger would result in a company that wields too much power and makes it extremely difficult for competitors to survive. Comcast, already the nation's largest cable distributor, wanted to buy Time Warner so it could acquire millions of subscribers in the United States' largest markets like New York City and Los Angeles. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying 